This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. So welcome to the planning board meeting of what, August 19th. And based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law um, and signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this planning board is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jack Jemsek and I will be the acting chair for this planning board meeting. I am calling this meeting in order at what 6:31 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and is available via Amherst Media live stream. Minutes are being taken as normal. I will now take a roll call. Board members, as you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then please place you, yourselves back on mute. Mike Bertwas here. Maria Chow here. And myself here, uh, Dave Levenstein is not here, uh, no longer on the board. Uh, Doug Marshall. Present. And Janet McGowan. Here. That's everybody. We're down two. All right. Uh, board members, if technical difficulties arise, we may need to pause temporarily to rectify the problem and then continue the meeting. If you do have technical issues please let sean or pam know is sean online sean no. is not but i can meet okay. him at a moment's notice okay good good uh discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed and the minutes will note if a disconnection has occurred please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment i will see your raised hand and call upon you to speak after speaking remember to remute yourself Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period and at other appropriate times during the meeting. Please be aware the board will not respond to comments during general public comment period. So a note there, you know, the public comment period is going to be on items that are not on the agenda. So, and that's one of the first items of the meeting. If you wish to make a comment during public comment period, you must join the meeting via the Zoom telephone teleconference teleconferencing link. This link is shown on the slide and can be entered into a search engine by typing. Do I need to read all this? Um, you know what? I usually have a screen up, don't I? Yeah, it, you know, I can't read a link. So the link is right here. Okay, so that's the link. Um, the link um, is also listed on the meeting agenda, which can be found on the town website in two ways. One way is through the calendar listing for this meeting uh, from the home page where you can find the link within the event details. The second way is to go to the planning board web page and click on the most recent agenda link. And on the agenda there is a link towards the top of the page where it states virtual meeting. Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the, the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the planning board chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. Moving on, the slide will now show the meeting agenda. So we have the minutes from July 15th. Are there any comments on those minutes? None. Okay, so uh, I move to approve the uh, the minutes. I move we approve the minutes of um, of uh, July. Uh, sorry, what number? What day is it? July fifteenth. Sorry. Okay. 
Let Mike move for that. Any second. Second. Okay. All right. Uh, this requires a roll call. Right. Yes. Right, Chris. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mike Bird whistle. Approve. Maria. Approve. Doug. Approve. Janet. Approve. And myself approve. All right, so that's five zero. All right, so uh, public comment period. And you're going to have to help me out here. Mm -hmm. And are, is there any, any yes. input? I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, I see Maureen Adams. Yes. Okay. So it looks like just Maureen. I will allow her to talk. Is it Maureen or Ma Maureen? Maureen. Maureen. Okay, I'm sorry. Maureen is muted. Maureen, can you unmute yourself? Yes, there. Am I unmuted? Yes, Great. you are. Uh, my, my comment has to do with new business item A. Would you prefer to take it then? That, oh, we're definitely going to discuss that. Yes. Yes, but you would uh, rather have it at that time and not now. Oh, definitely. Yes. Okay, uh, good. Yes. Good. However, I'll, lower, I'll lower my hand and talk later. Good. <laughs> so I, I guess I'm, I'm before I started the meeting, oh. I was. We um, have one more, Jack. Okay. Dean Hardy. Hi, my name is Jeannie Hardy, and this is my first time being at a zoning board meeting, so I, I'm hoping you can give some clarification. I would like to provide public comment on the old business item on 40R, but I'm confused. I have to give that comment before I hear your board discuss it, or I will be able to discuss it. Yes, it's like we said, if it's on the agenda, we're going to discuss it. And then there's a public comment period if there's time time allowed for the public to comment. So public- but According just, to the agenda, we're on public comment right now. Right, but that's for non-agenda items. I see, okay, thank you. All right. And I, I failed, uh, let me see, I, <laughs> where are my notes here? Here they are. Um, actually, I wanted to propose before we got started, um, and, and this meeting is like, seems like it's it's manageable. We have one item, uh, A, for old business that is going to be uh, delayed till the next meeting. So I'm, I'm wondering if we can keep this from being a four hour meeting uh, because we're going to meet again every two weeks and we're going to, and I think all this stuff, there's, there's a lot of heavy lifting here with the 40R, uh, maybe not so much the priorities, but uh, the zoning subcommittee and things like that, that, that we don't take this into the, the, the wee hours of the, you know, of the night, like we have, because we moved the time up to 630 for a reason and going to 1030 is just, uh, it, 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 it's not, it's not feasible, at least in my eyes and for the members uh, of the board, uh, when we were looking at to get a resolution to keep these meetings more in a manageable time. So I would offer that we have like a, uh, a, a stop say at 9 PM, if we need to go longer, but, you know, try to conclude by 930. And if ever is is everybody uh, um, okay with that general concept for this? Okay, because we're going to meet. We're we're not going. We're going to be here every two weeks. So, um, but I just find like for me, it, it's it's really difficult to go that deep into the night and try to do what you need to do the next day, sort of thing. So, um, and again, um, that's. I'm not going to take a vote on that or anything, but it's just that's what my hope and, and wishes and dreams are for this evening's uh, meeting. 
So um, with regard to old business, we have the chapter 40R smart growth overlay zoning issue that we're going to revisit. There's no presentation other than our discussion amongst the planning board uh, on this concept. Um, planning board, um, you know, we'll look at the amendment. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, hand it over to Chris here immediately but we had the presentation on May 6th from the consultants um, and we didn't really resolve any sort of recommendation uh, from that presentation. So we're now we're taking it up again. Uh, and so at that, I will hand it over to Chris. Can I, can I just mention before Chris, you start, um, Mr. Burt Whistle, Michael has his hand raised um, and I'm not sure when it came up or if it's up by default, um, but if you wanted to recognize that, Jeff. Sorry, I, I, I was on the panelists or the attendees view, not yours. So sorry, Mike. Um, did I understand you to say that you were going, that the uh, new business item 4A is not being discussed tonight? No, three, old business, old business 3A is being moved to the next meeting. Old business A. So new business is mm, has not changed. Okay. So we'll, we're going to talk about the zoning subcommittee and other topics. So Chris. Hello. Um, my name is Chris Bressrep. I'm the planning director, and I just wanted to give you some... Uh, context for this discussion about Chapter 40R, um, both for the planning board members and for the public. In 2018, um, prompted by the Amherst Municipal Housing Trust, the town applied for and received a grant from the state entitled Planning for Housing Production. The goal of the grant was to investigate, excuse me, can you be quiet? Please, Daniel, Frank, please be quiet, I'm on TV. Um, excuse me. <laughs> the goal of the grant was to investigate sites that might be appropriate for affordable housing and to study the issue of Chapter 40R overlay zoning, which is often called smart growth zoning, and determine, to determine if it's right for Amherst. The town hired consultants Karen Sonnenberg and David Eisen, who helped us with our housing production plan in 2013. Karen is a planner and David is an architect, and they've been working with us since the summer of 2018 on this project. The town has held three public forums in 2019. The first one was on April 4th, then there was another one on June 4th, and a final one on December 19th. Um, and we heard about what 40R is and what is smart growth and why is the state promoting this type of development? And we heard about how this type of development might or might not fit into Amherst. The consultants and staff received a lot of input at the public forums, but some of the planning board members weren't able to attend either some or all of the forums. So at the request of the planning board, the consultants gave a presentation on May 6th about what this project is all about. The planning board wanted to have an opportunity to hear directly from the consultants and talk to the consultants and among themselves about what is good and what isn't good about the chapter 40R proposal. After the consultants presentation on May 6th, there wasn't much time uh, in the evening. I think we were pushing 1130 that night. So they decided to hold another meeting for the purpose of talking about what they'd heard. The planning board invited members of the public to submit comments and some of the planning board themselves also submitted comments. These comments have been posted on the town website and they've been circulated to planning board members and to the consultants. A public forum is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, September 23rd for the consultants to present changes that they've made to the project based on input that they heard and comments that they have received. What's being discussed tonight is not a final proposal. It's an opportunity for the planning board to discuss the pros and, con pros and cons of chapter 40R as it has been developed to date and make suggestions and recommendations 
recommendations about whether it's worth pursuing, and if so, how to improve it. The planning board will not be making any decisions or recommendations tonight other than possibly to decide whether this project is worth pursuing. Some people are worried that this project is a fait accompli or something that has already been decided upon or that the process is happening too quickly and they didn't have a chance to participate. There's still plenty of time for the town and the planning board and the public to consider this proposal and to decide if it's right for Amherst. Among the things that still need to be decided are, is chapter 40R right for Amherst? If so, where should a 40R district be located? The town may decide that the downtown is the right location for 40R but that the current proposal needs to be revised. The town may decide that another location such as East Amherst Village Center is a better location. Once we know where it will be located, we can start to map out the edges of the district and begin to put together a zoning amendment that will include a set of uses that is appropriate for the location, dimensional regulations and form-based guidelines, also known as design standards. At that point, there will be a presentation to town council who would then refer it to CRC and the planning board for a public hearing. And then the town council, council would eventually need to vote to adopt the plan as a zoning amendment. So tonight we're nowhere near that point. So with that, I'd like to suggest that we listen to, as the planning board discusses the pros and cons of this pr proposal and begins to think about whether this proposal or one like it is right for Amherst. Board members and the public are invited to attend and participate in the public forum on the 23rd of September, and an announcement will be posted on the town website, and we'll do our best to notify those whom we know are interested in this topic. So with that, I will um, turn it back to Jack. Thank you. Very good, thank you. And, and so, I'm looking for comments from from the board. And again, I, I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like this is a planning board uh, um, issue. I mean, this is so early in the process. It, it was kind of born of, um, you know, funding that we got to explore this concept. And, you know, there've been forums, whether they, they've been advertised, whether they were intended, uh, to you know the extent that we thought was appropriate or not they were advertised and things like that but it's it's just it's just really early in the process conceptual um but i guess we're being asked to provide recommendations to count town council is that correct chris um, you're being asked to provide recommendations to the consultants and to the Consult staff oh. who are working on it. It hasn't so we're not, yeah. nowhere near town council yet. We are we are so early in this process. So there there's no real uh, uh, you know urgency early process. So you know we have to make sure we stay calm on this <laughs> and. Um, Again, I think we all have have questions and concerns, and and you know want to make this right. So uh, I'm sorry, I did not. All right, so I'm just going to go with the top of the list here, uh, Maria. Um, so okay, since we're not doing deep sort of discussion, I just if we are trying to give advice or feedback to the consultants, mine would be I'd I'd love to see more sectional drawings that describe the streetscape. Um, I understand how they're trying to divide things into different divisions. Um, and I think that from a lot of the feedback, um, it seemed a little rough handed, maybe not like, you know, more um, fine comb examination of, you know, the neighboring streets, but, um, but they're, you know, coming at it from a big perspective planner kind of viewpoint. So, um, so I think that, yeah, it just, it will take more time to really get into the nuances of the, you know, um, adjacent neighborhoods. But, um, but my biggest advice is just, I, I'd love more form-based zoning, more um, information on what it is they're proposing other than just 
maximum heights and minimum setbacks. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, everyone uh, can, you know, focus on particular streets and whatnot, but I think that overall, what they're trying to do is create a um, cohesive idea or plan for, for the parcels they sort of are highlighting. And, um, and I think that, you know, their goals are right. Um, it's just that path to that goal is probably a longer one than they um, probably thought they were going to have. And, um, and yeah, there's a lot of very near uh, public to give input. And so um, I guess, you know, it just, it'll take a lot longer, but, um, but my biggest critique of what we were given was um, it just didn't feel like enough information. I think that's where a lot of the worry and the uh, um, contention is coming from, because we just, you know, we have these sort of um, abstract, big picture kind of models and um, numbers, but it's not really describing in more detail, like um, setbacks and streetscape and how a building might step or, you know, change depending on what side of a street it's facing or what neighborhood it's adjacent to. So, um, so yeah, I, I would just, I want more design, more information from the consultants. Um, on that note, um, Pam, did we, is there a PowerPoint that we kind of wanted to? I have the packet available. Um, so what you received in your packet, I have available and I can try and share that. So um, I, I don't know if that would be uh, I don't I didn't know if it was going to feel helpful at this point. Um, I, I wanted to make a suggestion um, and I may have misled people. This is Chris speaking. Um, I am not suggesting that you avoid the details. Um, if you have problems with heights of buildings, if you have problems with recommended setbacks, this is the time to bring those forward. Um, if you have specific um, recommendations for how things can change. Um, one of the recommendations that I've made is that the area north of Triangle Street either be removed from the 40R or that it be changed to a District 3, Subdistrict 3 instead of District 1. So those are the kinds of things that I think are going to be helpful for the consultant when they're putting together their final product. The final product is expected to be handed over to us sometime in the fall. And what I mean as final product is it's the final product of this consultant for this amount of money hired for this contract. It doesn't mean that we are going to accept this and run with it and bring it to town council. All it means is that the consultants have done their job and they've handed something over to us. And then it's up to us to figure out what parts we like, what parts we don't like, but at least we'll have, um, we'll have a framework for how this could work. So please don't be discouraged from um, talking about this in detail. I didn't mean to discourage you from that. In fact, I'd like to encourage you because I think it would help to make the consultant's product better. And then hopefully it will also help to make our product better when we eventually come up with what we really want. Thank you. Uh, sh should I be calling on you, Chris, if you have your hand up at, you know. Uh, yes, you should. Not, and I not, not put you in the queue. Up. Yes. Okay. You did not have spoken up. Oh, right. Yes. You okay. So Doug Marshall, please. Okay. So, um, I did uh, provide written comments back in May, I think it was, when we were asked to provide written comments on the presentation we got at the beginning of May. Uh, my views have not changed. Um, if, if I were to advise the consultants uh, what they should do between now and, the, and whenever they are to be finished, um, you know, they've been working on this for two years with us. And I presume they've done kind of what they think they should be doing for this kind of, for the fee and the scope of work that was originally laid out. So my advice would be just to tell them to wrap it up and go on their way to the next uh, project so that we can in fact deliberate about what they've produced. 
um, I, I view what they've produced as not ready for prime time, uh, kind of like Maria was saying, um, whereas she was focusing more on the details of the form-based zoning, I, I don't understand the form of the draft that they've produced. Uh, there's a lot of, of, of wording in there about the intent. Uh, and, you know, it's not the sort of dry set of rules that I would expect from a zoning bylaw. So, um, you know, I, I, I guess it seemed like there's a lot of commentary in there that I don't think we need to carry forward. Uh, maybe it's useful for people who are not familiar with the current thinking and, and frameworks that planners are using for putting zoning together. Uh, and in that case, you know, great, that's commentary that could go in an appendix deep within our website somewhere, um, but it doesn't need to be part of a, of a bylaw. Um, overall, I think the zoning or the uh, massing that they're proposing is is fine and appropriate. Um, it doesn't get to the fine grain um, level that uh, I agree we'd be well served to think about. Um, but I also don't really understand why we need to do 40R in, in downtown. Um, I, uh, you know, based on my limited understanding of it, um, it's used to induce people to build more housing. Um, and we don't have a demand problem downtown for, for housing. We have plenty of people that would like to build housing down there um, at however high we allow people to build. So I would, I would use 40R in a different part of town outside of the center of town where the demand is highest. Uh, I'd use it as a, a, a carrot to uh, induce people to build more housing in, in areas where they may only want to build, you know, two or three stories. Maybe we let them build in an, an additional story. So, so I, I think the, the massing that these consultants have proposed is a good starting point for us as a town to think about how we might uh, better clarify the zoning downtown uh, with our own regular as of right zoning bylaws. Uh, and then we use the 40R uh, program somewhere else uh, outside of downtown where maybe the demand is lower. That's all I'll say for right now. Thank you. So I, I would, uh, I, 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 I just want to say I agree with Doug um, because, you know, downtown um, and, you know, 40R you know, 40R being more of a housing, you know, initiative, affordable housing. Um, that is an area where we only do certain things. And it, and it, and in terms of, you know, we also for housing, you know, the, the, I'm just, I'm just going, you know, putting my two cents in here, but um, we're looking at, uh, you know, young families, you know, and, for me, I, I feel like housing, we, we can provide all this, you know, uh, the studios and one bedroom, but I would like to see 40R be used to enhance young families being able to, to be, you know, within Amherst. And I don't know that that's a great fit for downtown. And again, you know, Chris has hinted that, you know, in terms of maybe East Amherst, but I'm just interjecting, but I just wanted to say, I do agree uh, with what Doug has said, pretty much top to bottom. So, Mike, please. Uh, yes, thanks. Um, I also agree with much with much of what Doug and, and Maria were saying, uh, particularly with regard to the relationship of the uh, proposed district to the downtown area, the uh, the um, district lines, uh, and the very concept of of this in the downtown. Um, I'm, I'm also concerned with uh, the way in which this entire project, for me, seems not to fit into the requirements of the master plan or the suggestions of the master plan. But let me just read from uh, section two, goals and policies. The very first goal and policy suggested by the master plan 
is maintain Amherst's existing community character. Uh, and it goes on uh, at some length to describe what that community character is, but it focuses on uh, the way in which things are now uh, as part of the, the goal. That's one of, that's the key goal, key directions for the community to uh, maintain Amherst's existing community character. And I, I believe that the proposal, uh, even though it may be in the preliminary phases, is still pretty full of bricks and mortar and 29 pages of zoning bylaw and uh, lots of PowerPoint productions. It's pretty well along, it seems to me, in terms of what the consultants have done. And I think they've missed the point of, of uh, maintaining Amherst's existing community character, uh, particularly in relation to the areas on the west side of East Pleasant Street and North Pleasant Street um, and on the north side of Triangle Street. Those areas seem to me to be uh, particularly the areas of, uh, west of, of Pleasant Street seem to me to be much of what makes Amherst uh, a walkable, interesting place to be. Um, if we move from the um, Amity uh, Main Street, uh, North Pleasant, Pleasant Street corner, which is the old part of town, the old downtown part of town, move up toward Triangle Street, we're going through a variety of areas in terms of the architectural and the feel of the, the street. Uh, some are, are dense, some are solid walls, some are old fashioned uh, buildings that have been adapted. Some are civic buildings like the fire station and the churches and the post office. This is just a wide variety of buildings in that stretch. Uh, it's a very short stretch for the amount of, of variety there is there. Uh, but much of the, much of the uh, pleasantness of walking through there and it being a pedestrian friendly place has to do with the small shops and the small scale architecture, which in the, given the proposal that the consultants have given us uh, is pretty much just, uh, eliminated. Um, now, I, I would regret this, that for that to happen. Um, and I think this is a question of scale and it's a question of location. And I, I definitely agree that uh, a 40 yard district, if we're going to have one in Amherst, and that's not a bad idea. I think it's probably a good thing to have in Amherst, probably not, shouldn't be there. And if it's gonna be there, it certainly shouldn't be with the, with the boundaries that have been suggested by the consultants. So uh, I think I'll stop there and uh, maybe add, add, add more to say later, thank you. Uh, okay, so I, uh, before I, uh, Chris, you speak, I, I forgot that I also agree with Maria in what she said. I didn't want to, no, give, I recognize Doug, but Maria, I also agree with everything that you've said. Uh, I think we, we, <laughs> we have uh, a, a somewhat of a consensus thus far. So, um, oh, Chris, are you to speak? Oh, you okay. Uh, so Maria, please. Um, yeah, no, I, I think we all generally want a really careful look at our town, but I do also want to be careful about um, not encouraging different ways to unlock more affordable housing downtown. I think that um, saying downtown might not be the place for, um, I don't think that's what people are saying. I think saying a 40 R, it might not be the place for downtown. Um, I hope that's not assuming we're not encouraging, you know, the social economic diversity that I think downtown really should have. I, I feel like there needs to be um, opportunities for all different people with background, different backgrounds, different economic situations, different family situations to, um, live downtown in a walkable thriving downtown and the way to do that is to unlock a lot of the parcels and that's exactly what 40R <clears throat> helps do because a lot of our zoning currently um, as uh, we know from the notorious BL you know um, 40R provides uh, quite a bit of opportunity for housing um, this was from three years ago, December 29th, 2017. One of the planning staff did a study of the BL and um, 
did the for the zoning subcommittee actually um, because we were just curious what that would unlock and help for the um, those three BL parcels downtown and it was surprising you know it could you could put 29 units from multifamily dwellings on the one east or sorry west of Kendrick and then on the one that's between Halleck and um, I forget the lower street 40 units for multifamily dwellings so 40 R you know would help bring diversity to I think a place that actually is deserving of this sort of um, changing of status quo where, you know, it's a really valuable property, obviously downtown, but it really should be more, um, there should be less of a wealth gap, I think. I, I, th I really feel like downtown, there are certain parcels that should be considered for 40R, maybe not the breadth that, um, Ms. Wilson has shown on, on the, the map that we're giving, but um, I don't, I don't personally would, would not want to discount 40R for downtown. Um, and of course I'd love it in other areas, but um, in particular, I would not want to say that downtown is not a place for it. Um, Okay, uh, um, I, I agree, uh, Maria. I, and, and actually, the, the thought went through my head that, you know, seeing how the BL, it would, if it was more restricted um, to, say, parts of the BL that are presently unworkable, that that may loosen some, you know, opportunities that you know the 40R is 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 targeted at, but um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, I don't see any other hands, which means we have uh, definitely an opportunity to hear uh, from the public. Well, yeah, Janet, uh, let me hear from Janet, yeah, uh, please. I can't see her. There we go. If, okay, I hope I'm unmuted. I'm, I'd like to agree with a lot of people that I think that this is, the 40R is not a great idea for downtown. And um, if we come to like an agreement on that in this proposal, that will save me hours of time going line by line through the zoning um, bylaw they're proposing. I, I thought it was kind of a nightmare to think about you know, we have the underlying zoning of downtown and there's problems with it. There's problems with the BL, which could be remedied maybe by a zoning change or a change in the definition of BL or dimensional table. But then, on, so those problems will stay there even if there's a 40R overlay district on parts of the downtown. And then we're gonna have, you know, 100 pages of our regular zoning bylaw and maybe 25 pages of an overlay district for sections of the downtown. Um, and to me, that just looks like a just a nightmare of complexity. And I would encourage the planning board and the zoning subcommittee and the planning department and the whole town to sort of look, you know, look at the t downtown in a cohesive way and try to fix the problems that we see, um, you know, unlocking some um, opportunities for housing, protecting neighborhoods, looking at the form of buildings, which I think is really important to people, the size of them, and looking at the form based zoning. So I, I, I just, this proposal, you know, shows a way and has sort of sparked this discussion, but I don't think this is appropriate for downtown. And I agree with Doug that if you're trying to spur housing demand and people to build, that doesn't seem to be an issue in our downtown. There seems to be a lot of people, a lot of groups doing that. We're seeing that, um, although there may be a small hiatus now because of our strange situation we're in. So, um, so I, I have a lot of remarks to make about the map and things, but if the, you know, I, I just wanted to say, I just, the idea of these two different, an overlay district with a whole different set of regulations on top of the current zoning, which still has problems and some strengths, just to me is sort of a legal or a planning board nightmare or any kind of to, to sort of sort through. And I don't think we need to make our zoning bylaw more complex. I'd like to see more simplis simplicity and flexibility. So um, I see no more hands, but and again, we have a September 23rd form on this 40R proposal so that consultants can wrap up their work. Um, and then, you know, I'm just looking at, you know, you know, what, 
what is the, the gist of, of our discussion of this at this point in time. Um, but I think we've, uh, okay, Doug. Yeah, I just wanted to, maybe I missed it when Chris uh, introduced that forum on the 23rd, but is, could she uh, clarify, for, at least for me, is that a one of these regular public meetings or is this a CRC hosted event or is this a planning board hosted event? Thank you. May I speak? Chris, yeah. Um, so it's unclear who's hosting it. Um, the other events have not been hosted by a particular group. I think they've just been sort of a community meeting. Um, if the planning board would like to host it or maybe the housing trust hosted the other ones. I don't exactly remember, but um, it was really kind of a, just an opportunity for the whole town to get together and, and talk about it. And I think, you know, after the event on the 23rd, the consultants will take whatever they get out of that meeting and wrap up their project. But that doesn't mean we have to wrap up our thought about 40R. You know, I think that there's a lot of meat here that we can use to come up with good ideas, either for the downtown or for elsewhere. And um, the planning board can still discuss this. You can still have this on your agenda um, going forward if you think it's worthwhile pursuing. Um, so I'm not sure, did I answer Doug's question? Yes, I think that's, that, that you did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so I see no more hands uh, amongst the board. So I think Pam, we can look at the attendees. Yes, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see everybody. We do have three raised hands. So, there's Kathy Schoen, Ken Rosenthal, Jean, Kimmy Hardy, Pam Rooney. Can you see them, Jack? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. So uh, Kathy uh, is at the top there. So perhaps. Is that you where can... you want to start? Yes. So... I, I wasn't keeping track of who had their hand first, but she's at the top. Me so either. That's what okay, I'm here we with. go. Hi, Kathy. Hi, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm Kathy Shane. Um, I'm, I live up in North Amherst on Montague Road. I'm also on the town council, but I'm speaking now just as Kathy who lives on Montague Road, not in the downtown. Um, I want to make a few comments. I had not sent in public comments, you know, trying to make sure that the council is not weighing in in some way. So it's just me. Hold on, I muted her, unfortunately, I think. Or she did. Okay. No, I didn't touch anything. Am I back on? You are on. Yeah. I'm not going to touch anything, Pam. So if you, you just, you're in control. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I, I thought the comments you all made were excellent and many of the um, public comments were as well. So I just wanted to um, offer a few thoughts because when I first read the consultant report, I had to look up a bunch of terms like transects, transects one, two, three, four, five, form based. And many of the designs um, that they put in the specifics of the zoning changes don't seem to me to go with the concepts that were conceptually discussed. When you get to the quasi urban, all of them are assuming a certain amount of public way away from the curb. So I didn't see anywhere where we were measuring how far is the current sidewalk, you know, how far is the per current public way? Because typically in the urban, it's 20 feet back before the building starts. So it may be able to build right up to the edge of it for zero clearance, but it's got a greenway and it's got a sidewalk. So a six foot sidewalk, a six foot greenway. And that's to, if you let something go taller to diminish the sense, then it's um, overwhelming someone who's walking by. And it goes with this whole notion of walkability and people friendly and benches. Um, so I went and looked at a few towns that were putting something in downtown, a housing complex 
And if they didn't already own that public way, they said to the developer, if you want to go taller, so taller than two, two stories, then you have to give up some of your land in front to create a wider sidewalk. And I can, I can send in the places I found. So it was negotiation to try to create um, a bench, a place to sit and meet, um, a place what we're seeing downtown now to put out a table. Um, and I think that's particularly important if there was ever a thought that this would be families as far or as opposed to students living downtown. So the kids could go outside and not be right away in the street um, and near it. So that was one thought. And then the other is on form-based code, um, since it seems to be on everyone's um, top of their list. It, when you read the people who are advocates for it, it says form-based code is whatever form you want it to be, that you have to decide what form you want it to be. But it's supposed to be inviting, comfortable public spaces, walkable streets, um, uh, and a specific vision and intended use. And so I didn't see any of that in this. And 40R, when you read about what other towns have done, they're trying to think of what's the space they're creating especially as for its families with kids. What does that space feel like to the people who are gonna live there and the people who are gonna walk by it? So um, as Janet said, rather than going into criticism of specific line items and the zoning changes, I think wherever you put a photo are, it's gonna be what, it, what does it feel like to the people who live there? When Northampton did their 40 R's, they had the luxury of an old mental hospital, but they built a large amount of green spaces so people could walk out of their apartments and find not necessarily even a big park, but just some place to sit down with a bunch of kids at a picnic table. Um, and we certainly don't have that kind of space downtown, but we do have Kendrick Park. So if you were setting it back further than Kendrick Park and had easy walkways. So my last point is to think about the streets. It's not a building, but we have um, smart streets and designs and we're supposed to worry about where is the bike lane can two wheelchairs pass on a sidewalk can you put a bench out what does that feel like and um two of the places that were proposed downtown didn't ever mention the streets um you know what is the current street look like how wide is the street is it a little narrow street um do we create a, a wall or corridor and shadows so I, I think as you go forward on this, some of it has to do with zoning downtown more generally, but if a building grows taller, Buford said, by the time you get to the third story, the whole story steps back. So sunlight can come in. Um, so that it's, it's a, again, it's a negotiation. You wanna go taller, move away from the street. As you go taller, step it back. And just thinking of sunlight, and I'll, I'll stop there. I took a picture um, a year and a half ago when I came downtown on a beautiful sunny morning and had to put my um, headlights on because one East Pleasant completely had the street dark and it didn't get light again till I got to Brugger's Bagels and it just completely blocked the sunlight. So if you think of that happening from both directions, from both the East and the West, we have um, no sunshine on Kendrick Park, on a, on a whole thoroughfare. So I think the entire space, since you are the planners, um, needs to be taken into consideration. And I'll stop there. Yeah, I, I, I'd have to agree again with, with uh, Kathy's you know, reference to the Hospital Hill where that was an, an area that, that was you know, requiring some incentives for development and that just brings to mind like downtown is doesn't necessarily need the incentive but we need the housing and it's just like trying to you know fit um 40 r seems like a great tool uh incentive but i guess we you know from what i've heard that the board has questions with regard to location so um oh kathy has her hand up no, I, yeah. I, think, I thought I took it down. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, Ken uh, Rosenthal. Hi, Thank Ken. You. Thank you very much. I'm Ken Rosenthal. I live on Sunset Avenue. 
uh, and I'm a former chair of the ZBA and been involved in Amherst planning and on, on various committees for a number of years. Uh, I, I want to say first that um, thanks for this opportunity. I do agree with the comments first by Doug Marshall and by others of you about the appropriateness of 40R in town, yet there are many things in a 40R proposal that could make sense for Amherst. I'm not going to try to talk substantively now because I want to talk to you about process for just a moment. I was invited, and I, I was very pleased to have been invited to a small uh, conversation a couple of weeks ago that was summarily uh, uh, canceled. I looked at that uh, as an invitation to me, not because I represent anybody but myself, not because I represent where I live or, or, or what I might stand for and what else I might represent. And I thought of it as an opportunity, as the beginning of a series of conversations that I would not be involved in that would involve representatives of your board uh, to hear people from the neighborhoods in which some of these changes are being proposed. I think that's a great idea. And uh, I think that, uh, um, that, the, that having a, a, a community-wide forum every six months or so on this subject, this goes back, as Chris said, a couple of years, we forget what we've, what we've heard, we forget what we talk about, and, and the ideas are lost and not followed up. You need to hear from people who are experienced, you need to hear from people who are inexperienced but just concerned, you need to hear from people in the neighborhoods where these ideas are being offered. And we have a wonderful opportunity now with Zoom to do that. Um, I can see you, but you can't see me. You can't see that I'm holding up a book called Essays on Amherst History, which I've mentioned to Chris as a, as a wonderful resource for understanding how Amherst became what it is and, and the problems it had in becoming what it is and the mistakes that it's made in the past. I, I, I would want people to have an opportunity to read that book. I'm sure there are copies in Town Hall. My copy was given to me by Alan Torrey uh, in 1978, and, um, and I love it. I refer that to you, Essays on Amherst History. But you could see me because Zoom can allow you to have a meeting in which you can see everybody who's attending just the way we would in a, in a room in Town Hall, but not to hear us. Pam can control the opportunity for us to speak. So there's no Zoom bombing allowed, but we can see each other and we can have a gallery view. You can know who's in the room. I can know who else from my neighborhood or from the town might be there and you would know too. <clears throat> but you'd also be able to see me. We'd be able to see the expressions on our faces. You have an opportunity to do this better. So two things I'm suggesting. One is to improve the way you do your Zoom meetings and I'm talking to Brianna Sunrid about this and I hope we can make some changes that will give that will make this more realistic and the other is not to give up on the idea of having small gatherings they do not have to be open to the public for participation but they could be open to everybody for for listening just the way I'm suggesting you do your meetings allow us in but not to talk you can hear five or six people at that meeting for instance that I was invited to John Kuhn who's a planner and, and uh, was a retired uh, architect was invited. So there are opportunities that you can use this peculiar time, this pandemic time, to do things better than we ever have before. And I hope you will not miss those chances. Have small meetings, have gatherings, do not try to have massive forums every six months, but have meetings much more regularly. Let other people participate, let the community watch but not intervene and you'll get some good ideas and I think it will help the process. And I thank you for listening to me tonight. Thank you, Ken, before you sign off, I, you had two points. I, I understand the second, but you said, I think the first was improve Zoom meeting. And I'm not, and I, the second was like small gatherings for listening and having experts involved and things like that. So I'm just wondering if you could clarify your first point. Sure, sure. Um, Jack, the, the, um, I've just been taking a course of all things in jazz at Lincoln Center. It's taught by, um, it, it's offered to 150 people who are attending this meeting. We can all see who's attending. None of us can talk unless the monitor uh, 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 allows us to, to unmute our screen. So that 
you would be able to see just the way if you were sitting in town hall in a meeting room, you could see the 75 or 35 or 25 people who are gathering in front of you. You wouldn't hear from them until you wanted to, Mr. Chairman, because you would have control over when they spoke. But when they spoke, they could see you and you could see them. Being able to do that, with uh, not, not being able to do that, not being able to see our expressions, not being able for us to see who else is there, so we know whether perhaps we might not want to talk. I don't know, for instance, how many other people are going to put up their hands today. And um, so I don't know whether I have to cover everything that all of my friends who are may or may not be present might be wanting to say. It's an easy thing to do. It doesn't cost any more than, than this does. And, and again, uh, I don't want to take your time in doing it, but I can, I can show you how it's done because I've been doing it as a student in a course of 150 people and it works. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Jean Hardy. Is that correct? Okay. There she is. Hi, Jean. And can can you unmute yourself so we can hear you? <clears throat> Thank you so much for giving me the chance to talk. As you mentioned, my name is Jeannie Hardy. I'm a resident of Amherst. Yes. I live on East Pleasant Street near the proposed 40R location. Uh, I would like to echo the sentiments which were just raised. It does feel a little bit dehumanized to just be a black box and not be able to, you know, actually share as a human being with a face and everything. So if you could change to allow us to see each other, that would be terrific. I do want to thank the, the zoning board, but I can tell that you guys do a tremendous amount of work and put a lot of work and effort and hours into this job. And I really want to thank you for that. And I also want to thank you for your thoughtful comments. I can tell that you've thought about this plan and you are keeping residents of Amherst in mind and I really appreciate that. But there's are still a few things that I want to say even if some of these have been covered already because I think it's important for residents to be heard. Because when you make these decisions, you are impacting our lives. When a five-story building gets built a block from my house, and I can no longer grow any plants uh, or <clears throat> send my kids out safely to play because uh, the traffic is worse and the visibility is terrible. It really impacts my life. So I live right next to the limited bus business district. I frequent those stores all the time and I'm happy with them. I like the integration. I like the way these buildings are short. It's a transitional space from downtown Amherst to the residential neighborhood where I live. <clears throat> I am really thrilled to hear that the Amherst Master Plan wants to maintain the character of the town. And I've looked in depth at the 40R plans that have come from the architecture architects, and I agree completely that these do not keep the character of the town in mind. The setbacks, I know you don't want to talk about details, but the details matter to me. Because the setbacks at, at, at Kendrick Place are so small that it's already made a wind tunnel before we get another huge five-story building on the other side. When you look at the architectural drawings, you see a five-story building up around 20 feet from the houses that it sits next to. And so when you're thinking about putting a 40R in downtown Amherst, would you please remember that in addition to thinking about the new families who will be able to move in, if that happens, and I would like to pause to say, I haven't seen that happening. I live very near where all of these apartments are, the new apartments are, and I have not yet met any families who live in those apartments. Whereas I know many, many students and young professionals who live in those apartments. So it does not seem to me that if we are trying to build a place for families to live, that the developers are choosing to uh, build buildings that attract young families. But getting back to the human nature of the people who live in the neighborhood next to the proposed 40R location, I would like to ask you to please remember that it could be your house that was going to have a five-story building eight feet from your property line built on it. And I'm, I'm grateful that many of you are saying that um, 
40R should not be in downtown. Whether 40R happens in downtown or not, as you make planning decisions, please bear in mind that these are our homes. And we don't, you know, we didn't choose to move to the middle of Manhattan. We chose to move to Amherst, which had a particular character. And if you change a limited business district to, to allow massive buildings, it really does change the character. When I looked at these, um, they looked like these plans were designed for the middle of a very dense city. There were no greenways, there were no open spaces, there were no playgrounds, the setbacks were extremely, this extremely small. And if we are going to build buildings in, in this transitional zone between a business district and a residential district, they need to be on the scale of the residential district so that the people whose homes are next to it do not get dwarfed by a giant shade producer. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, we have uh, Pam Rooney, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you so much for uh, for allowing some public comment tonight. I did um, I did happen to submit a number of comments earlier, and that was back when we thought it was going to be discussed in July. Uh, and all of the comments still stand. Uh, it's it's hard in a way to sort out what the most important comments are to sort of reiterate and recapture. Um, I think there are not many people in town who do not support uh, some increased density in areas that are um, poorly designed and poorly laid out, just sort of residue from the 50s and 60s when Amherst grew so rapidly. rapidly. Um, I think I think 40R could be a tool that could be used, but I also think it's it's one of several zoning opportunities that could be considered. Um, I know the zoning subcommittee has worked on doing some pros and cons of various tools such as inclusionary zoning, um, form-based zoning, 40R, a whole discussion of of zoning within the the uh, town center. I think these are all really important tools to sort of lay out on a table and and sort of cut and paste and review. I, I really enjoyed hearing, I think it was um, Janet McGowan say that it would be appropriate to try to simplify some of the zoning rather than creating more complexity. And I, I, I think that's a really good goal. I, I totally agree with the fact that the, the concepts behind 40R, the smart growth, the, the livable and walkable and, and friendly uh, scenarios are, are wonderful. It's exactly what, a, you know, the kind of town I want to live in, but the details that were provided by the consultants missed it by, by, by miles. Um, the the math I would have to say I believe that the massing and the scale of what was proposed uh, is is inappropriate to the context that they're being put into. Uh, again, I agree. There there's it was not it was not a new town plan that we saw from the consultants. It was simply what would be what are the what are the largest Kleenex boxes that we can fit into the area between Triangle and um, and North Pleasant Street, for instance, or or on on Halleck Street. What are you know? How many big boxes can we fit in there? And if we maximize five stories, then we get X number of units out of it. We we can continue to increase the number of housing units in town. I would like very much to see more affordable units in town. I think I think we need to almost go block by block if if a 40 R concept or a zoning tool was adopted, in which 
you really do create transitions from neighborhoods into the town center. The, the transitions that we saw in the consultant's dimensional requirements were laughable. They, there was no transition. There was simply, we have a, we have, oh, we have a, we have a limited business district. We could fit five of the big Kleenex boxes in, in that zone. And over here we could fit two. I'd, I'd love to look at it in more detail and, and really understand how to create the type of the place that we want to live in. And a number of people spoke much more articulately than, than I can on that. We, we do want to create place. We don't want to simply maximize floor area and height. Um, it, it's not the way to create the, the college town, the look and feel of a New England town. So I have lots and lots of comments. They're all in writing, but I think, I think really this, this particular document so misses the intent that was stated that I think, um, I agree with someone that it should probably just be wrapped up, comments, all comments noted, and just say, thank you very much. Let's not do any more damage. And, and um, let's let the zoning subcommittee start a new process of, of starting to pick this thing apart. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy Pan, please. Hi, Dorothy. Dorothy she's I'm, muted. She's okay. muted. Okay, so now here I am. Um, this is a topic very dear to my heart and I really do agree with much that has been said. Um, Kathy is so correct about green space, wide sidewalks, walkability. Uh, right now, we have a situation where the building, makes some people feel almost impossible to walk on the sidewalk. Uh, I would hate to try to walk that with a stroller and a young child. It is very unfriendly to families and children. The question of shadows is a serious one. I've seen the shadow and it was, I was shocked the first time I saw the shadow come across the street. Uh, I'm very excited about the new playground at Kendrick Park, and I see they're working on the new drains. But then I began to fear that because we have this lovely park, that somehow that will be an excuse for not having any green space in front of the buildings which might be built on both sides of the park. So I, I, don't, I don't want that. But also it is, it is a playground. Uh, so it would be nice if in fact there was some family housing that could be there. One of the things that we've talked about is 40R has a lot to offer in terms of, I, I think, is it 25% possibly of affordable housing? And um, I do agree totally that the downtown is not that space because it's not a group, it's not a place for a large, large number of families. But if we just made that simple zoning change of inclusionary zoning, 10 to 15% of all construction of units or space of all new construction would be affordable, which as we know has a wide range uh, of levels. So that affordable comes to be uh, to do with the middle class as well as people at lower levels of income. So, um, I, so many people have expressed fear to me that form-based zoning, which is to kind of zone, I guess you can interpret it in many ways, but one definition I've heard is that you make the housing fit the area uh, that it's going into. But now they're afraid that the brand new buildings that have come up will then be the dominant force. And the small, lovely New England houses, which are on the west side of Kendrick Park, will no longer be considered, oh, that's part of Amherst. I mean, I think the discussion started off really correctly um, with uh, Mr. Burtwistle's reading of the master plan, which said, don't lose the feeling of Amherst. But yet I do know that we need some more building. I know that we need some new tax revenue. So it's a challenge. It's a, it's a really big challenge to see how this is gonna be done. I, I agree with the suggestion of having um, uh, filmed uh, forums. I went to most of the forums and the last one I went to, there was so much distress in groups all around the room. People were saying, no, not that. When, and that gets lost. 
people were not happy with the slides. They did not see that as something that they wanted in Amherst. Um, and I, I felt, wow, couldn't they have found some better pictures of affordable housing that uh, could, have, could fit in with 40R that could be appropriate to Amherst? I'm sure they exist, but the pictures, unless it was a building we don't have, the only ones I liked were when there was an old building that they repurposed. It's an old building that represented something that had been there that looked like the town of Amherst, but we don't have those. We don't have the old factories to redo. So we can't do that. So if it's going to be new stuff, I think it should have some relationship to the town of Amherst. And I am for new family housing, but I also agree with uh, one of the speakers. We shouldn't forget the people who live here now, the families who live here now and make their, their sense, their feeling, their, enjoyment and appreciation of Amherst is as important as that of new people as well. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Um, mm -hmm. And that's all we have with regard to um, hands up for the public um, attendees. And I guess if there's any anyone on the board that wants to respond to what we've heard uh, or expand further, but um, I'd like to, I, th I think there's a, co a general consensus here. And again, it's, um, seems like it's not ready for prime time as proposed, uh, but we need to support the consultants to the extent we can and make their next form uh, beneficial to, a, to us all, um, but they're locked into the downtown area. And I'm just, I think that's probably the main, you know, number one sticking point uh, there. So any other board members have comments on this subject? Good, so uh, Chris, can uh, you comment in terms of where we go from here? Um, I am seeing Michael's hand. Oh, it's gone. Well, um, there it is. Yeah. Uh, I wonder though, are are we are we locked in to uh, the downtown? Is there any reasonable approach to shifting the focus of this project to some other point? other place in Amherst, as several people have suggested. Uh, I think we all agree that there is a need for this kind of housing. Uh, we all agree, I, well, I don't, shouldn't say that. I, I think it's, uh, many people seem to th feel that the, the character of, of the, of the uh, area called downtown, uh, perhaps a misnomer, uh, is worth uh, considering and preserving and enhancing. Uh, so it seems to me that a possibility exists of uh, shifting this proposal to uh, perhaps the East Amherst area that we have, some of us have been talking about. Uh, and uh, perhaps the, if, if that seems to be a good idea to many or most of us, uh, the consultants might in fact take that as a, a, not necessarily a directive, but a suggestion in terms of what their next uh, proposal ought to look like. So I don't know whether that's that's a given or not. Um, Chris, please. Um, I I think that consultants are getting towards the end of their project. So um, for now, we're probably going to see the downtown as the you know location that's being suggested. But that doesn't mean that we have to adopt that suggestion and we can um, go ahead and investigate whether this would be appropriate in East Amherst, the East Amherst Village, and that may be a conversation that the planning board wants to have. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to be possible at this time to shift the consultant's location. And I regret that, um, but We've been working on this for two years. I think they were expecting to be done with it after one year. And I'm not actually sure of how much money they have left in their contract. I mean, that's something that I can investigate, but I don't 
think that they're going to be able to shift at this late time. So I think probably what we're going to end up with is, um, you know, a suggestion for how this could work in the downtown. And then we'll have to take the parts of that that we like and try to figure out how to make them work in another location that is agreed upon. Thank you. Uh, Doug? Yeah, kind of following up to what Chris was saying, I don't see any reason that we couldn't put together with Chris's help and the planning committee or the planning uh, staff um, a proposal to institute 40R somewhere else in town, whether it's East Amherst or somewhere else. Um, I think, you know, we've uh, as we've been talking about the zoning subcommittee's future, we've been talking about uh, potentially setting aside some time each meeting of the planning board to talk about, you know, kind of nuts and bolts, detailed planning ideas. And, um, you know, maybe that's the first one we want to talk about. Um, and then I think the conversation would probably uh, need to involve Chris and whether her, she and her staff can, can, can help us put together a proposal to send to town council or whether we'd need to hire a consultant for that. Chris, do you have any response to that? My sense is that um, given our workload that we already have, it would be challenging for the planning staff um, particularly with regard to the graphics to come up with um, a proposal for another location. But I think it would be really exciting if we decided on another location to try, if we can possibly do it, to hire a consultant um, to help us with that. I, I think, you know, we all seem to think that maybe this is a good idea, maybe the concept of 40R is a good idea, but we don't like the details that are being proposed right now and maybe there is a location that would work better so um, I'd be really interested in exploring that but I can't promise that the planning uh, department staff would be able to manage that at this time so Chris when oh uh, Janet so I could see how the 40r would be especially for starting for Amherst like a 40r project in a smaller site or a smaller um you know not like we're going to rezone the village center or anything like that but i kind of go back and forth between this idea of you know you know like let's do some village center zoning maybe in east amherst or a different village center and use that as a kind of like how could we do the village center zoning that we're supposed to be doing for the last 10 years according to the master plan and just address the problems in the underlying zoning and not layer again the 40R on top of zoning that's flawed. And so, you know, do we, you know, like I know in East Amherst, some things are zoned commercial, so there can't be any residents, or maybe there can in these circumstances. It's just very dense and complicated. And to me, it seems simpler just to say, let's take a village center, set up a process for looking at the problems in the zoning, working with the community and saying, hey, what do you want to see in your village center? let's fix the underlying zoning so we can get there, you know, like more housing, you know, small shops, you know, you can walk from building to building without going over curbs and, you know, snow, snow banks and things like that. I would, I would rather do that than layer a 40 R on top of an entire village center saying, you, we don't like your underlying zoning. And then we're going to put this thing on top. And then we all have to wade through the nuances of that. But I can also see the, a small 40 R project, you know, going in a small place and saying, okay, let's do this as a demo to say, this is how you can increase density and maybe building heights and everybody likes it. You know, it doesn't feel like it's coming at you or over you, but if into your, your neighborhood. And so, you know, my, my first preference would be, let's look at the underlying zoning in a nice community planning process, but look at 40R as kind of a tool in the toolkit that can be appropriate in select areas. And uh, Chris. So I just wanted to say that, um, you know, we've been talking about this um, in the planning department among the staff. And I think there's a, 
certain amount of enthusiasm for aspects of the 40R. I think, um, you know, deciding partially what we'd like these buildings to look like, and that involves form-based code and design guidelines, and really looking carefully at the relationship of the width of the road to the width of the sidewalk to the height of the building. I think that's something that we really want to look at, and we really want to explore how we can um, encourage or require affordable housing in these areas. So I personally feel like we have learned a lot from going through this process of the 40R. And um, I, I kind of agree with Janet that um, the 40R may be kind of too big a, an animal for us and that um, maybe it's more um, uh, appropriate in a place like, um, you know, Waltham or Watertown or Somerville or some place that's closer to the downtown of Boston. And it may not be appropriate um, for Amherst. Even in Northampton where it's been used, it's been used in very selective ways. It was used on Hospital Hill for um, property that, you know, really didn't have a lot of people crying out to develop it in its current, um, format. And so by using 40R, they really um, managed to do something good there. But that was outside of any village center or downtown. They also used 40R to develop a, an affordable housing development on Pleasant Street. But um, again, that was, um, you know, specific to one building. It wasn't really a whole neighborhood. So my personal opinion of 40R is that um, it may not be the right tool for Amherst, but there are aspects of it that we've learned from. And um, I would like to take a crack at, you know, looking at um, the East Amherst Village Center, certainly, and trying to figure out how we can improve that. But also um, the BL district around the downtown, I think that's crying out for attention. And there are, um, you know, restrictions in the BL district that just make it impossible to build anything there or anything that is um, really useful for the uses that we need. So, so that's my opinion that I think we've learned a lot from this process and there are tools that 40R uh, provides that we can um, think about using in other ways, but we don't necessarily have to go down the route of 40R. But that's not a decision that you have to make tonight. You know, there are opportunities to think about this as we go forward. If we all go to the forum or listen to um, a broadcast of the forum and then um, come back together maybe in October and ha have another crack at this. Um, maybe we'll come to some different conclusions or some more solid conclusions. So Chris, um, again, this, this is coming before us because more of the effort is a, of the housing trust or former housing trust program and them finding funding and this exploring this um, because we had the ability to do so. So the housing trust isn't really equipped to um, think about zoning. Um, it's really a planning board thing to think about zoning. So I, I spoke with the chair of the housing trust about a week or so ago and he, you know, I was trying to say, well, the housing trust initiated this project. Why doesn't the housing trust carry this forward? And his response was really that they didn't feel equipped to deal with all the ins and outs of, of zoning that, and planning that are required to either make this work or decide that it isn't, it isn't gonna work. So they would prefer to have it be um, taken up by the planning board. Uh, his response was more like, well, if, if anybody's gonna do it, you know, probably the planning board would be the group that would be the, um, the proponent. And um, from what I'm hearing tonight, I'm not sure that the planning board is ready to be the proponent, but maybe after um, the forum on the 23rd and after talking about this more, you would be willing to be the proponent of this in some other location or in some other form. So I think it, it, there's more conversation to be had. Okay, so I, I'd like to wrap up our conversation on this, but I do see one uh, uh, public comment hand, uh, Kathy. Uh, Doug's hand is up and Mike's hand is up and maybe you could just do one last round. Um, mm -hmm. 
and looking for a protocol here uh, for Kathy's hand being uh, being on the public side. When well, when would we let take, her in? Take one more public comment and then wrap it up with planning board comments. How about okay. that? Okay, so I'm going to uh, let Kathy speak and then we'll wrap it up with the planning board comments. I just had a question um, about the public forum. Since you came to a conclusion, not this design, maybe not this place, do you really want to have the consultants present in a public forum? Or do you want to use that to talk about, here's the concept, and we're possibly thinking of some other directions and get feedback on that? Because otherwise, you're pulling a lot of people in to react to something that you had more questions than positive statements. So if you want to have the public forum, I would suggest switching the focus. Good point. Uh, thoughts on that, Chris? Um, well, I know that the consultants are planning to change their um, proposal based on what they've read, what they've heard from the group. Um, I think it's legitimate to talk at the forum about do we really want this, but I, I guess I'm reluctant to just um, have, I, I kind of want to actually have an end to this project. So I'd like to have the consultant give us something and maybe they'll give us a revised version of what they have already given us with an addendum that says, you know, more study needs to be done, different locations need to be explored or whatever. But I, I, I think, I kind of feel like if we take the route that Kathy's suggesting that the project is not going to end, that it's just going to keep going. And, and I feel like that's not the right thing to do at this, at this time. But other, others may have a different opinion about that. At some point, we have to cut the consultants loose and just say they've finished their project. Yeah, I mean, I, I question the, the forum then if it's just going to be based on the downtown proposal, uh, not sharing it, it is going to go anywhere. And is it of any benefit, you know, to the town to go through that process and have the consultants do that? You know, so but anyway, uh, I'll call on uh, Doug. Yeah, um, I guess my this wasn't my original comment, but based on the two previous comments. Um, I understand well Chris's desire to close the, bring bring the, con the process with the consultants to a close and that they're probably at a point in their process and fee that they're not gonna be able to really substantially change direction. However, um, you know, I, I, I would view their their, their final presentation as an opportunity for me to be persuaded if, if in fact downtown is the right place uh, for the 40R. Um, I did not attend any of the public meetings. Um, I know there were, uh, there was originally a long list of potential places for 40R to be done. I assume East, East Amherst was one of those and you know, I'd be interested in maybe a recap of the comments from community or from the consultants that said, no, we don't think East Amherst is the right place. We think downtown is the right place. So, you know, I think, I think it's worth bringing the consultants in at least to do a videotaped recorded presentation that we can use as a reference going forward. Um, even if it's not worth the time of a lot of other uh, community members to attend because they don't see why we would do that. Um, I guess the other comment that I was going to make earlier was, uh, you know, I think this has been a valuable exercise. It sounds like Chris's staff got so, has gotten a lot out of it. And it seems like it has jump started this conversation at a time when, you know, we have the new form of government and, you know, maybe this is the right time to be thinking about some new uh, zoning structures and districts in town. So, you know, I applaud the housing trust for, 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 and, you know, getting the grant and, and leading this process. 
That's it. Thank you. Um, Mike Bertwistle. Yeah, I um, I think the, uh, the I think the planning board's gotten a lot of, a lot out of this as well. Um, and I think it's appropriate for us to take the ball and run with it in whatever shape the ball is and in whatever direction we want to run. Uh, but I think it really is up to us now to uh, figure out what the next step is and uh, draft some kind of uh, revision of the zoning bottle or addition to it that encompasses a lot of the ideas that have been brought forward in this process. Uh, for the improvement of downtown or and or for the improvement of one of the neighborhoods, whichever one we turn out to want to uh, focus on. Uh, but I do think it then becomes the planning board's uh, responsibility. And I, uh, I think we're up to that. So I, I guess, uh, Chris, I'm wondering in terms of this forum, if it's going to be the, the, the last hurrah, so to speak, if maybe they step back and recap everything they've done and and with regard to all the village centers they've looked at and then to just kind of you know allow you know a, a step back versus like the downtown proposal but i just i just don't see it you know having the support um but yet we're all very interested in the 40r in perhaps other districts in the town well your thoughts? There may be aspects of the changed proposal that you might like to hear. Um, so when they, I'm gonna write up what we've heard tonight, Pam and I will write it up and send the minutes to the um, consultants or at least draft minutes. And, and they've heard a lot of um, comments from the public and from others. So they may, you know, decide that the buildings should be shorter or that certain parts of the overlay district shouldn't be as they were proposed. I guess I'm reluctant to just cut it off at this point without seeing what their final proposal is. And I think I like the idea of having them go back and recapping why the downtown was chosen. Um, but then, you know, just having people talk like they're talking tonight. I don't know if more people would come to this forum or if it would be the same people, but I think it's worth having the consultants come back one more time, show what they've done. I will, you know, relay to them what we've talked about tonight. And there's not a lot of enthusiasm on the part of the planning board to, um, to take up the the flag of this 40R project and go forward with it, but there are aspects of it that we really like, and we may choose to, you know, locate a 40R in another location. So I'm going to try to give that the consultants a flavor of this meeting, and it could be that um, you know what comes out of the forum will be useful. Um, so I don't think we should abandon the forum, and I don't feel like we shouldn't have them wrap up their proposal to the best of their ability. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are people feeling like they shouldn't even come back and we shouldn't even have a final meeting? We should just get a final product and then do what we will with it? Uh, I, I, my, my feeling is like, it's like, let's move on. <laughs> I mean, Mm -hmm. the, the form uh unless it, it includes like a big picture i'm not i just don't see the downtown thing being fruitful uh although there there are potential little you know like bl zone segments and things like that that seem fruitful but uh i see a number of hands up uh doug i guess um uh, i think we in response to chris i think it's worth bringing them back one more time. I was also going to ask whether uh, this would be a, uh, whether it would be appropriate to have a motion to continue this conversation to the first meeting in October. So we can wrap this item up on the agenda for tonight and continue it in October after the forum. Maybe I should just make that motion. Okay, we have, we have Janet. We have Janet and Mike's okay. hands up. Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. 
Okay. Janet? Um, it just seems awkward to me to, to have, if I was a consultant coming to present this proposal to a board that, and a group that isn't enthusiastic about it or interested, it just seems like very awkward to me for the consultants. And I wonder, um, that's all, that's my comment. It just seems like a very awkward situation for consultants to walk into. Although I, I see your, you know, the desire for a final written product, at least. Thank you, Janet. Uh, Mike. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. On the other hand, um, the last document, the list of one page document that we got from the consultant uh, shows a whole bunch of ideas that they have uh, uh, suggested that they're going to incorporate in the next proposal. Some of those have some significance, at least. Uh, one appears to be uh, eliminating the uh, uh, the area north of Triangle Street from the uh, from the main the, the urban zone, uh, so it it could be that what they come back with is significantly different and there and then different enough so that it gives us more information to work with. So I I think I agree that it may be a little bit awkward for them, but you know they're working for us uh, and uh, I'm not all that concerned about whether they feel awkward or not. Uh, I'm concerned about getting something of value out of them. And this may be something of value. I don't know for sure, but it might be. And then again, uh, are they work? They're not really working for the planning board. They're working for the planning department. What we have to say here, uh, Chris, I'm not even sure we have, you know, the authority to kind of like dictate, you know, the form, you know, substance, and, and all that. So again, a clarification on your part, be appreciated. Well, you know, I think um, I am not noticing anybody else who might take up this banner and run with it. Um, I am not hearing from the developers um, and I'm not hearing from the housing trust. So I think the planning board is probably the, you know, point person, if you will, who is being looked upon to um, take this to carry this forward. So um, I think you can, you know, make a judgment about whether you want to hold the form or not. But I agree with Michael that um, I think it would be worthwhile to hear what they finally come back with, because there may be parts of it that would work. We don't have to accept this whole um, area that has been mapped. We can accept parts of it, like Janet was talking about. Um, there may be, you know, little pockets of this that would work. Belmont, for instance, has a 40 yard district that only has eight housing units in it. So um, it could be that, um, you know, we, we could carve out a place in the downtown that might work for some, um, some property owner. And that would be a conversation that the planning board could have. So I would recommend going ahead with the public forum, seeing what they're proposing, having a conversation, maybe similar to what we've had tonight, and then having another conversation um, the first week in or the first meeting in October, and I don't know what the date is, but Pam might, might know. It's October seventh, according to my list. So that that seems to be a good plan to me. Okay. Um, so, uh, do we need to take a vote on this? Because you don't. Yeah, we don't. Okay. So I think we'll re revisit this at the forum and uh, we can move on, is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So um, it's at eight, you know, about 8.10, uh, two major items we have left is the priorities list for zoning amendments and then the status of zoning committee. So um, maybe, you know, a half hour each, maybe 15 minutes for the priorities list because we already talked about that the zoning subcommittee might mean you know need a little more time but that would get us close to to nine o'clock so uh with that uh the next item on the list is the priorities list for zoning amendments and we received a summary obviously um, um well we we, we discussed this uh, mike burt whistle uh, had, you know, modified the table. The table is, it, it seems like it's quite old. Uh, or you bring something up, Pam? I did. 
Do okay. You want, do you want that in front of you? So we have we have the chart. We have um, the chart with Michael's suggestions. We have um, Janet McGowan has sent in some comments. So we have those. Um, yes. So anyway, I guess uh, just leading into this, uh, you know, we we can you know this can be uh, pages and pages of of details, but I think, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but what this has been requested from the town council, the the the, the CRC, and that they just they want to know what our top priorities are. And, and so I, I figured that, okay, that's correct. All right, I see you shaking your head. <laughs> so, I mean, so let's get our, our top three. I mean, if we have to make a four, we can make a four, but then I suggest, and let's get that to them sooner than later, like tonight, and then develop a secondary list of, of future matters that will be much longer, that will include pretty much everything on that table, unless we want to scratch things off, but we're not going to get to that tonight. But we really should be able to address the top three or four items tonight and then get into the weeds in later meetings that we want to make sure that, are, that, are, that is in front of the town council and CRC. Uh, and that, that's, that's my take on this. Um, any comment? I'm going to uh, call on Maria. Um, I don't know if you had time to look at this. I uh, basically summarized the top three from our last planning board meeting and I started to add a fourth one. And then like you said, Jack, maybe we table the adding of five through 10 till later. But the top three I wrote down were improved downtown zoning, number two, unlock housing development and increase diversity of housing stock. And number three, recodification of zoning bylaw. I think that was the consensus of the big points that we all kind of um, had and then there were a lot of other outliers like I remember Jack you said there was um fixing of the um the sort of water demands in North Amherst area and some other people yeah. had parking and but I feel like the top three were those three and if we can sort of hone in on that maybe I don't know if you guys agree with this summary or not but it was sent out uh, Monday or Friday, I can't remember. Yes, I mean that, that's my recollection that we I, we almost were to a point where in general agreement, uh, I f and then we had uh, a submittal by Janet, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I have not processed all all of that. Uh, maybe Janet will want to speak to that, but again, I think that is. If there's more detail be beyond the, you know, like the major items, I, I think that we should continue that discussion. For for you know. You know later meetings, but I I don't think we want to drop items off necessarily, but keep it on, on a list. Um, but I think town council is looking for us to provide, you know, more focused. Um, uh, concerns, which I think we we arrived at last meeting, but I guess we didn't vote on it or um, and that. So I'm I'm kind of uh, Maria, your your list is not in our paper copy, so I'm kind of looking for it. Uh, oh, here it is. It is. Okay. Good. All right. Um, so the you know first one being improved downtown zoning. I think we were all kind of on board with that. And then housing development, increased diversity of housing stock. We were pretty solid on that. And then the recodification of the zoning bylaw was kind of a mixed bag, but it's just overall like, let's get the zoning to where it makes, you know, makes sense. And so that's already being undertaken by the building commissioner. Um, so with that said, uh, uh, Janet, you wanna speak please? So um, Maria, I really, I really liked your list and my, my confusion, maybe not my confusing, the, I see that nothing's that clear to me in sense of 
are is the town council saying if we had to do three zoning bylaw changes in the next year what would you pick because when i look at maria's list there's really like about 12 different section 12 different changes that would take place when i look at my list i see that i've seen the same sort of complexity um you know i had sort of that the um housing package as being look at mixed use of buildings apartments affordable housing and parking as a package because it's kind of and that would be town wide so if you have a, an apartment does it have to be 35 units can it be bigger if it's a mix you know there's problems in the mixed use buildings so that's like a housing package of buildings um you know building apartment units and then your your package in number two is unlike unlock housing development and, and increase diversity and so that's looking at the different residential zones or the different places and talking more about lots and things like that. I just think all of this that once we start on it or the town council is we're talking about like 10 or 15 different bylaw changes. And so I'm kind of at a loss for how to summarize. Like, you know, my number one would be affordable housing because I think it's long past due and that wouldn't just be downtown, but you know, any residential, any, any project that leads to 10 or more housing units there has to be at least 10% affordable units. And so- So wouldn't that go under number two? Yeah, I sort of go local saying, are they looking for very specific changes or- No, like, I think they're looking at big picture, just big picture okay. from the planning board. And then, um, I mean, we are, you know, we're gonna probably talk about zoning subcommittee too, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of details behind it, but I just, I feel like we need to get pass this with several big picture items and then you know work on the details of the nitty-gritty of zoning in our next topic there perhaps with you know the zoning subcommittee so it's, hard, it's hard to work off of two documents so working off of maria's document i would say the definition of mixed use buildings and apartments and include inclusionary zoning, I would move that from downtown zoning into number two, because those kind of belong in there more. Um, and then, you know, one thing that when we were talking about unlock housing, you know, in different residential areas, I keep on thinking, you know, in the zoning subcommittee, we've talked often about the need for owner occupied housing. So if you have a two family or a three family building or more, that at least one person living in that building is an owner because of the issue of student students living in different parts of town. So, you know, in my in my neighborhood, if there was a three family house and there was no owner living there, that could be 12 students or more because we know that landlords rent to more than four students per unit. So I think that kind of balancing of mm -hmm. owner occupancy, and but that's kind of going into the weeds a little bit, but I want to raise that issue about student versus not yeah. student. And, I mean, um, I've I've heard with with owner occupied um, housing, you know, from folks on the on the ZBA that it, it doesn't really that concept kind of doesn't really hold up. Uh, although ideally, it, you know, it sounds good, but um, not you know that, that that's all I'm going to say. But uh, who else do we have, Doug? Yeah, I guess I viewed uh, whatever we send to town council and CRC as part of a conversation. And I, th I feel like we're early in the conversation. So we're talking broadly about general topics and we're looking for them to either say, yeah, we kind of agree that those are the broad priorities or not. And then we, so we'll hear that back from them. And then we, can work with Chris and her staff on whatever priorities probably overlap between what we think should happen and the town council and CRC think should happen. And then we send specific things back as we finish them and uh, as they're informed by further conversation with CRC and town council. So I view what uh, Maria put together, uh, particularly the first three items as broad topics that we think the focus should be on over the next, say, year or something. And I would simply be looking for kind of a concurrence back from them that, 
yeah, we think those are, should be the priorities or not. And then if they're not, then we need to find a way to have some more conversation with CRC. Uh, but if they are, then, you know, we're sort of good to go and we can, we can get into more into the, to the weeds. So I don't, I would be happy to vote for Maria's, especially first three and say, let's send that to town council. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Um, and, and we're already working on number three. Uh, is that correct, Chris? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. The first two, not so much, uh, other than. Well, it'd be nice to know the town council agrees that the building commissioner should be doing what he's what he's working on. Mm hmm. Okay. So uh, we have Mike's hand up. Mike. Yeah. Um, I like Maria's list a lot. Um, I'm wondering whether. Uh, the town council would be better off hearing specifics from us or hearing generalities. And I'm not sure. Uh, I like the notion of picking three from Maria's, no, three of the bullet points from Maria's number one. And I would pick uh, mixed uh, dimensional requirements, um, define mixed use buildings and apartments and, and, and fix inclusion or Add, deal with inclusionary zoning. I would pick those three as my top areas of concern. Uh, and it seems to me that if we pick three things that are relatively specific, we might have some chance of getting something done. If we if we pick uh, generalities, and I think, I mean, I, I agree with all the things that Maria's listed here, but I think the categories are so broad that we might tend to tend never get to the weeds. I think we need to get to the weeds and pick three things that we want to work on or four uh, and ask the town council uh, and the and the zoning and the uh, CRC whether they want us to work on those things. So I'm going to ask for clarification from Chris because there's a history here. I know the table that was passed around uh, with the three columns and three rows of is is pretty antiquated. It, it's it's extremely busy and 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 so what are we trying to do here, Chris? I think you're trying to start a conversation with the CRC. Um, you've asked for guidance from town council and they've asked for your opinion about what you think is important so they can give you guidance. So it's sort of a round and round conversation. I think if you give them something clear to consider, like Maria's list of one, two, three, then they can um, take that and respond to it and say, yes, these are the kinds of things we think you should be working on. I but don't think that they want you to get really specific about, you know, we think that you should work on mixed use buildings in the downtown and what their first floor should be. I don't think they're gonna be that particular. Um, you know, and the other thing is they haven't really had that much exposure to zoning. So I think they're looking to you for um, your opinion. And I think these, these three broad topics are very, um, very timely and very important. And so I would, I would agree that these would be the three that I would vote for. But they, but they are looking for this. They've been looking for this because, because uh, I'm wondering, we, we could deliberate this further. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, so, if well, we can just get them the, t you know, something I think we'd be doing ourselves a favor and seriously, and, and, and the broader we keep it, the better. But again, the details will always be there for us as we are, you know, tackling how we're gonna, you know, address zoning issues within the planning board, you know, moving okay, forward. Yeah, excuse me if I'm interrupting you, but I think this really rolls into the next conversation because I think that the um, CRC um, sees itself as having a greater role in um, developing zoning amendments. And um, so I think that they are going to be, um, they're, they're going to be taking some, I won't say control, they're gonna be taking some actions and they wanna make sure that they are not um, out of line with the things that you think are important. So. 
I would go with this list, not get too involved in the weeds. I do agree that the multicolored list is outdated. It was started in, I think, 2015 or 16 by um, a former planning uh, department staff member as a way to get a handle on all the different things we were working on and try to figure out which things we thought were priorities. But um, And this has been carried forward year after year. But it, some of it may not be applicable anymore. Some of it may not be the priorities, may not be what we really think we need to do. The other thing is that in doing a recodification, we're going to be sort of, you know, probably rolling some of these things into that recodification. So I would just go with Maria's list as a first, um, a first offering to the CRC and okay. town council. And so then, Maria, I think we'd like to speak on this too. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I can remove number four and then you, Chris, you think I should just remove the bullet points? It's getting into the weeds too much. I mean, that's fine. If that's, this is the beginning of a conversation that's going to continue, we can just have those in our back pocket. You yeah. Know. Um, and then they may reach out to you and say, what do you mean by improved downtown zoning? And then you can come back with the bullet points. Okay. Well, then I probably don't really need to revise this, right? It's literally those three. Mm -hmm. I, they, yep. Okay, so yeah. Okay. So I mean, I, I don't to... need to revise it in that you could just send those three bullet points to the town council. You don't need me to create a document for it. I don't. No. Yeah, okay. Uh, so someone want to you know, move that we, those, the, the three bullets that we have, one, two, and three. Um, are good at this point in the process that we can send as the planning board's opinion on the priorities? Well, it's Maria's document. She probably should uh, move it. No, this is yeah. this is all of our work. It's literally a summary of what we talked about at the last plan where we made the three bullet points. So, um, okay, I'll move that we <laughs> push these three bullet, uh, three main points to town council as next steps on zoning priorities. I second that. Very good. Okay, um, we'll do a comment from the board. Okay, so let's, uh, oh, Janet. So I was just, just to make the point that in improved downtown zoning, you have definition of mixed use buildings and apartments and inclusionary zoning. Those aren't downtown issues exclusively. So I was hoping you'd drop them to number two, because I don't want the CRC or the planning, I mean, the town council to think we only think inclusionary zoning. I mean, I hate to draw an inclusionary zoning bylaw that adds another la strange layer of detail instead of just saying, let's just, you know, go across the board like the housing studies recommend. That's a good point. Good point. Those two, I think, are just town wide. And so they maybe can drop them into a box too. That would just help me because I don't want to create more confusion. Um, sorry, I'm going to just jump in. I'm not going, we're not. I didn't propose that we would show any bullet points. We're only going to show items one, two, and three where it's underlined and no bullet points. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood them. Thank you. Yeah. But for our for our own purposes, we should make that change, I think, because it makes sense. Uh, I agree. For future work. So again, we're just like improve downtown zoning, unlock housing development, and increase diversity of housing stock recodification of zoning bylaw. That's that's what we're we're voting on that. That's what the motion is on. Um, okay, so Janet, you still have your hand up. Okay. Uh, Maria, do you have anything to add? Okay. Uh, and Doug. Yeah, I'd like to call the question. Okay. We're good. Um, I again, I, I'm here I'm getting my <laughs> my rules here. So uh, we're ready to vote with the call to question. Technically, you're supposed to have a vote on calling the question. Okay, so the call to question. So uh, anybody want to uh, second that? Yeah. <laughs> Seconded. It doesn't need a second. It doesn't need a second. All right, see, there you go. All right. Okay, so let's, so we shall vote. Roll call, right? Yep. Okay. So, uh, uh, Mike. Yes. And Maria. Yes. And Doug. Yes. And Janet. Hi. And I am a yes as well.
Thank you all. Well, now you have to vote on the motion. Now we have to vote on the motion. On the motion. Okay. And uh, so Mike? Yes. And Maria? Yes. Doug? Aye. Anna? <laughs> Aye. And myself uh, as an I as well. And I see one hand up in the attendees. Uh, e I, and I don't know how long it's been up. Um, my apologies. It's Dorothy Pam is yes. up. Yes. Okay. I've asked her to speak. Okay. okay. I just am wondering if the, the, the list you're sending to CRC does not reflect in its simplicity the conversation that was had tonight. So I'm just hoping that you can include some aspect or flavor of conversation you had with that with those suggestions. Oh, yeah. Should we have a, a I'm we speaking have a, as an individual? Okay, yes. Should we have a representative of the planning board? available for questions or, or, or Chris, obviously, uh, have Chris present for questions in lieu of more detail uh, during your, your meeting with, where this is uh, presented, Dorothy? Well, I think you could write a very brief report that's a, that included some of the um, sense of consensus that happened tonight. Otherwise, we're just going and starting from zero again and, and you know, we've been through this dis these discussions many times. I feel tonight was a very important discussion um, that reflected the thought that has taken place in the arguments over a long period of time. And we want to move this thing forward, so. Absolutely. Um, I can put together a memo and um, for, for Jack's signature. How's that? Great. Thank you. And uh, Marianne? Um, I assume is on this topic. Maureen, I believe you're muted. It is because it's always the, now am I okay? You are. Good. I just had two comments on this I hadn't anticipated making. Uh, one was I want to build on what Dorothy says. I think that Janet's point about taking inclusionary zoning and uh, possibly also fixing the BL. The, I've heard the fix the BL come up time and time again. And certainly inclusionary zoning has been a very long issue for us. I would really like to see them in some way heightened and generalized as town-wide issues and not just as issues that kind of come up through 40R. So maybe you can do that in the discussion that that really emerged as important for us. Um, Yes. I don't think the BL, uh, that has to be downtown because that's only where <laughs> yeah, the BL that's, is. That's why, okay, uh, yes. But uh, I was just kind of, yes, yeah, sort of inclusionary zoning. Okay. That's town wide. The second thing is, uh, I, I don't know if this is correct, but it seemed to me that the driver for 40R that came from the housing trust had to do with affordable housing. I think that that was really the yeah. driver for that group. And I think that if the planning board can take up, uh, you know, IZ and other affordable zoning issues, as indeed you'll remember that uh, John Hornig had come to you months ago, kind of asking what you could do as a planning board. I think if you were to go ahead and do that, that might pull some of the pressure of, off of 40R and let 40R simply be an instrument and not have that kind of energy behind it. So that was just the thought. Done. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have, you know, 25 minutes till nine o'clock and, and we can move on uh, to uh, topics not reasonably anticipated 40 hours, 48 hours prior to the meeting as part of old business? None. None, okay. So new business and then uh, status of the zoning subcommittee. Oh, where am I? Let 
I'm just shifting papers around here. Pardon me. Um, May I just say this is another topic that doesn't need to conclude tonight. There's nothing resting on this um, decision. So you can have your conversation for the next 25 minutes and then carry it over to a future meeting, which could be the 2nd of September if you wanted to. Yes, and again, my um, I don't think we have in our packet uh, Maria's uh, memo. Do we? Oh, wait a minute. I think you did. Yeah. Um, or maybe it came later and Pam put it in um, the addendum. And it came later, actually. Yeah. But okay. I can okay. summarize. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, and actually, I had a minute this afternoon to quickly read all of the emails that were circulating about this from Chris from public. And I'd like to just summarize so that maybe we can, in the interest of time, shorten it in that um, I think Janet's point about tabling the ZSC until um, after like maybe December or so makes a lot of sense. I'd like to go through my, through my four points really quickly just to express why right now the zoning subcommittee um, is not gonna have a lot of traction, but that maybe in the future after town council sets up priorities and direction and Mr. Rob Mora goes further with the zoning bylaw amendments that maybe there is a time for the ZSC, especially after new planning board members join. But that right now, like we said, because town council and CRC are setting um, zoning amendment uh, priorities, it doesn't make a lot of sense for ZSC to be working on things. The second being Rob Mora is working on zoning revisions as well. Um, to what scale, I'm not sure yet, but um, hopefully we'll find out soon. The third point being a lot of planning board me members um, have shown interest in discussing zoning and I would welcome that, especially since um, my point number five is that the current zoning subcommittee staff, uh, sorry, zoning subcommittee group is not the strength that all these people emailing <laughs> and um, Chris about, you know, zoning subcommittee brings all these amendments and has brought it for decades. Yes, they did. And we are not that group. Um, that was a group of people who actually really understood the zoning bylaw from not just know where to look at look things up like I do, but they actually understood it at a different level where they could take a problem and think through all the different implications and where things could sort of um, interact to work toward a goal. And that was a different, I mean, they literally had almost 30 years of experience um, writing zoning amendments and bylaws and presenting them to town count, uh, town meetings. So we're not that ZSC. Um, could we be one day? Sure. Right now we're not there. And so that was another point why I thought the ZSC should dissolve. But hearing all the feedback about how important, you know, um, the work has been in the past and could be in the future. I think Janet's point about like, let's just hold off, um, wait until town council gives us priorities and directions, and then regroup and think about how to move forward the best way possible, especially since it's a big workload on the planning department staff. They have to do a lot of work just to prepare for a ZSC meeting. It's not like they just show up. So that's a burden I don't want to put on them right now, especially since priorities are not set up. Um, and especially since a lot of planning board members are showing interest in having more in-depth zoning discussions. So um, in the interest of time, if people are agreeable to that, then that we are not dissolving the zoning subcommittee, but we are thinking about next steps after we get priorities pushed our way from town council and from CRC that we will then um, maybe it will reform in a different format because we have new members. Um, Maybe uh, it'll be more targeted because we'll have priorities set up. Maybe we'll be working with Mr. Mora more. So um, yeah, in the interest of time, rather than discussing whether or not to dissolve it, I'd like to just see if people are open to tabling the status of the zoning subcommittee for, what is this, August? For like three, four months until everyone gets their feet under them as far as, you know, setting up priorities and COVID and all the extra um, burden that the planning staff has on them right now. Thank so that's, you. That's basically it. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, Mike had brought up uh, last week, he, he has his hand up, but I'm just, I'm wondering if we can, you know, dedicate like a half hour of our uh, agenda for each meeting to discuss the zoning issues and making it uh, number five, you know, in our agenda, just so that we're like touching it, you know, until that time. That's uh, because, my hope. I mean, I'd yeah. rather have a more fruitful discussion with the larger group than right now the zoning survey is Janet and I. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know I when, when this, you know, I back, you know, a year ago to you three years ago, you know, you guys were meeting at five and then, you know, the regular planning board was meeting at seven and we would go till, I mean, it's like, it was a marathon and but we all have, I think, valuable thoughts and, and input. And so uh, with that, I'll let Mike speak. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, I, um, I have certainly no objection to the notion that the planning board as a, as a board would discuss for half an hour or an hour each meeting, whatever zoning issues seem to be uh, on the front burner. Um, however, I think it's important not to even put the zoning subcommittee on a hiatus. Somebody has got to write any changes that we're going to submit to the CRC. And I don't want to try to write uh, something like this with seven people around the table. I want to write it with two or three people around the table at the most, or with one person writing it and then two or three people editing it. Uh, so that's what a subcommittee is all about, is, is getting into the weeds and doing the writing. Now, to be sure, we don't have the expertise that uh, former uh, zoning uh, subcommittee members may have had. Uh, but that's not to say with uh, modest, and I don't mean extensive staff help, but modest staff help, we can't come out with uh, zoning amendments that will pass muster uh, once we decide what we want to write about. Uh, and it seems to me that the planning board itself ought to decide what we want to write about, and the zoning subcommittee ought to write about it. Uh, and if we don't have a zoning subcommittee on the table working, then we've got nobody to do the writing. Now, I, I suspect that there will be new members of the, uh, I know there will be new members of the planning board coming soon some of whom may have extensive experience in this area. Um, so I think it's unwise to decide now what we're gonna do about uh, this issue when we'll have two or three new members on the board. Uh, let's see what happens with those two or three members and see where we are, but let's not take any action about dissolving the zoning subcommittee now. Two points, uh, Janet. So um, am I, can I hear me? Yep. So I, I would like to hear from Chris sort of the history of the zoning subcommittee because I think it's been sort of a long and storied one. Um, you know, way, I, you know it's, it, it feels like it was a different era, but I think it was in January or February where Rob Mora came and met with the zoning subcommittee and outlined his proposal for um, a zoning bylaw overhaul. And he said over and over, he would work closely with the zoning subcommittee. He would look to the planning board for priorities and direction. Um, there would need to be consultants for certain issues like you know downtown building heights, um, parking, signage. And he repeated over and over again that he'd be working with the zoning subcommittee. I don't think you have to be like a, an expert legal drafts person or to have the zoning bylaw like in your head, you know, you know, the way you had your multiplications tables to, um, to be effective on that committee. And so a lot of it is kind of, you know, I could see when you're getting down to actual language going through it and going through different parts of the bylaw, it's good to have a back and forth. I mean, people on the planning staff know the bylaw, you know, David Levenstein brought up an issue about appeals that he developed from the familiarity of working with the, the zoning bylaw. Um, the planning board has a lot of expertise and people, you know, the, as I understand, the zoning subcommittee would bring issues to the planning board and be discussed and go back and do some drafting. I would dread us doing that as a board of seven, you know, just the subsection A reflecting to, you know, 
Article Four, you know, one o five point C. So, you know, I mean, I that I mean, I I can do that, and I, you know, have been paid to do that. I don't think we sh that's an effective strategy for seven people. I don't think the town council has more experience at it than us with the CRC. I think they have less, and they have larger groups of people. Um, so I, I, you know, Rob Moore also came to the planning board and kept on saying how he wanted to work with the zoning subcommittee very closely, the same message. If that has changed, we should talk to Rob Mora about the whole, you know, I, I, I just want, you know, I've only been on the planning board for a little bit more than a year, and I feel like we changed direction so many times in responding to the town council. I, that was kind of the purpose of my memo about, you know, my six months in the zoning cup subcommittee where we're just like, okay, we'll do this, we'll do this. And, you know, stepping back, of course, we're going to work with the town council. Of course, they want to know our priorities. Of course, we want to work with the CRC. But we, we're a planning board, we're independent. We have a master plan that we haven't implemented very effectively for 10 years. We actually have zoning bylaw changes sitting around um, on multi-use buildings that we could put forward, you know, after a few zoning subcommittee meetings or talking to Rob Moore. So I don't really get why we're stopping the zoning subcommittee, except that we did because of, you know, because of the COVID crisis. And, you know, I think if, you know, in a, you know, a few weeks, we'll have more members of, you know, on the planning board. And let's just say, who wants to be on the zoning subcommittee? And let's chug along and work for a few months. If it looks like we're just going off a cliff and the planning board's like, oh my God, these people are so inexperienced, then let's have this discussion. But I don't, I don't feel like, I feel like this has been a, a good committee with a lot of power and a lot of intelligence. And then we have the intelligence of the planning department consultants and the planning board to look to. And obviously we have a very deep um, group of people in our residence. So I'm not sure where this kind of move comes from. I, I don't, maybe I'm overconfident, but I think that starting September, we could figure out a Zoom thing, add some members. I don't know if Michael was coming to meetings. I don't know if Jack wants to come, but just let's, let's just start going again. Okay, that, my only comment is uh, I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure I agree with, we haven't been implementing the master plan <laughs> effectively. That's my only comment, but we have, uh, Chris, would you like to speak? Yeah, well, Janet asked a little about the history of the zoning subcommittee and, um, you know, for a long time, it was sort of a loose group of people who met with Jonathan Tucker on um, Wednesdays before the planning board meeting and Jonathan would bring things to them that he had written and they would talk about um, you know what they had written and then they would bring it to the planning board afterwards. So it was really um, Jonathan Tucker who wrote most of the zoning amendments and the, the zoning subcommittee was a, a group that um, you know discussed them with him and made suggestions and that type of thing. Um, and the planning board used to have um, part of its um, meetings, um, especially before town meeting, but I would say for, you know, two or three months before each town meeting, discussing what was being proposed, discussing zoning bylaws. So the planning board was, you know, fairly involved with um, developing zoning amendments. And then when um, Jonathan Tucker left, uh, Rob Crowner took up the, the um, whatever you call it, and, and started writing zoning amendments. And um, he was very effective and he was the chairperson of the zoning subcommittee for a while, but he was a member of the zoning subcommittee for years. And he did most of the drafting of the zoning amendments. So, um, you know, those were two really strong people who did that. Um, right now, the planning department, I don't think, um, it's going to be hard it to manage. I'm I'm being asked to um, help to staff the CRC and help them to understand zoning and help them to uh, work on zoning and for me to um, work with the zoning subcommittee and the planning board and do all the other things that I do. It would be a really heavy load. So um, I am getting strong sense from uh, town council and the CRC that the CRC would like to um, be more active and more directive and more of the principal um, writers and determine determinants of the uh, zoning bylaw and the zoning amendments. 
and that um, you know they'd really like to take the reins. And, and that's the message that I've been getting from the chairperson of the CRC and also from Dave Zomek, who works with the CRC. So um, I think it's you know, potentially working across purposes or redundant to have both groups working on the same thing. Um, so I would really like to promote Maria's um, Maria's support of, of one of Janet's ideas, which is to put the zoning subcommittee on hold for a while. Um, wait and see what happens this fall. Find out what the um, building commissioner comes up with. I know he's actively working on reformatting the zoning bylaw and um, probably coming up with some specific changes. So, um, and his intent now, now that he's heard from CRC and he's heard from um, Dave Stomach, the assistant uh, town manager, who's also the staff liaison to the CRC. Um, Rob has gotten the message that I've gotten that the CRC would like to take the active role in um, in writing the zoning amendments with staff. So, um, yeah, so, so that's, it's a kind of an evolving situation. I don't think anybody has ever actually stated this in public. I'm probably stating it in the public for the first time, but that's the direction that I am witnessing things going in. And um, as I said, I think it's gonna be a, a heavy lift for me to staff the zoning subcommittee, help to staff the CRC and staff the planning board and do all the other things that the director of the planning department does. Um, I, I would love to at some point be able to tell you about all the things that the planning department does, but um, I'm reluctant to jump in with both feet right now and say, oh yes, we're ready to work with the zoning subcommittee um, to draft zoning bylaws. So. I would almost make the suggestion that if you wanted to continue as a zoning subcommittee, um, that you take on the role of, um, you know, kind of staffing yourself. And if you have agendas and things that you want me to post, I'll do that. But it's, I don't think I'll be able to attend the meetings, take the minutes, re refine the minutes, bring the minutes back, make packets, all of those things. It's just, it's too much. That's my my two cents right now. Thank you, Chris. Um, um, okay, so we have Maria and Mike, but I and I'm wondering about uh, Pam. Have you identified someone in the in the public? Continue? We have at this person. There's one person. Uh, one person who wants to speak. And from okay. so, you know, Mike has already spoke, Maria has already spoke. Should um, I'm wondering um, if, if we if hand not... raised, Chris might be ready to guide us on this question. There are two people in the attendees who want to speak Maria and Adams and Pam Rooney. So, um, I would say, you know, let them have their say and then go back to the planning board members. Okay, um, I assume uh, you can just shake your head. <laughs> Mike, you okay with that? Okay, all right, so uh, Marianne. Here you go. Hi, Marianne. Marianne, you're muted. Now do you hear me? Yes, we do. Thank you, okay. Uh, I think you have my memo that expressed some of my thinking on this because uh, did you have you had a chance to read what I wrote yesterday? Uh, because what I wanted to do was was express my very strong concern that the council take this kind of initiative on zoning issues. I think that's wrong for a number of reasons. First of all, it's the state regulatory role, as I understand it, that the planning board is in charge of zoning. I'll need to check that with Rob Moore or others to find out about the actual legal status, that is the state status of the planning board vis-a-vis -vis the municipal status of the council. 
So that's a question as much as a comment, but it really worries me. The second is, as Chris certainly knows, I've been a planning board junkie for probably the last 10 years. Uh, I'm happy not to be in your position, but I have observed you very, very carefully for a very long time. And I have been impressed by the range of viewpoints, by your independence of thinking, by the very, by the real technical knowledge that some of you have of the bylaws and the kind of connection and empathy that others of you have with the citizenry of Amherst. And I think that's exactly the kind of balance one needs in a planning board. And I should think it must not be preempted by the town council, which is a different entity, has a different legal status, and serves a different purpose. I've observed in the last few months that, at least in my view, your work has been muddied by the confusions raised by the CRC and the council. And it's really made me sad to see that. You kept asking, what do they want? Who's in charge? It's, you know, it's like the joke, who's on first? And obviously the town council is the new kid in town and needs to be edified. But I don't think it's the role of the planning board to defer to them. I think it's the role of the planning board to figure out what are the key zoning issues and go ahead with them. I also think it's a conflict of interest for the town council to think that they can initiate what they believe should be the priorities for the planning board and then be the group that votes on that at the end. They can't have both of those roles. The initiation of zoning issues has to come from you and the public. And it seems to me that if the council has some good ideas, I'm sure they'll find a way to communicate those to you. But the idea that you stop your work or delay your work because of their confusions, and I'm not saying this in antagonism to the town council. I've been tremendously impressed by the heavy lifting and the startup work that they've done. But they are the new kid in town on zoning and you're not. And it's not your job to educate them about zoning. If they want to have a key role in zoning, I do believe as a 40 year professor that one learns how to educate oneself on those matters. And to see the work of the planning board delayed and of the, sub of the zoning subcommittee sabotaged because of that confusion really breaks my heart as a fan of the planning board, even though you know I've often disagreed with many of your de decisions. So I'm going to need to find about, about the regulatory issues. I think you are the people who are in charge of zoning. I think you should be very firm in explaining that to members of the council who don't appear to understand that. And I think you should firmly maintain that separation of powers. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and one more public comment would be from Pam Rooney. Wow. Um, Morianne's uh, comments are, are right on point. Uh, I, I had no idea that CRC was, was looking to get that engaged in development of zoning. And I, I totally agree with Morianne that, that it is the role of the planning board to do that. Um, I did send in some comments saying simply that uh, I see the zoning subcommittee as a workhorse, and I think your the planning board itself is not terribly large right now. You're kind of under undersized, but uh, so the zoning subcommittee is a is a pretty good portion of your of your membership. But perhaps with some new members, 
uh, coming in, there will be some people interested in this. Um, I would, I think what my reaction will be is to express my dismay about the CRC's uh, engagement in the weeds. I feel very strongly that council should be an executive level. They are our govern government. Um, they should not be doing the legwork and the, the drafting of, of bylaws, period. Um, they certainly can express interest and they can, um, if there are some priorities that come out of their desire to improve the town in certain ways, that's great. And you can put on your agenda to talk about it and, and decide if you want to really uh, go in those directions. And I think hopefully there's enough consensus in town that, that maybe your, your priorities will overlap. Anyway, long story short, I just think they are an executive group. You are the workhorses and the sub uh, zoning subcommittee is even more of the nuts and bolts. Let's get the details in order. Thanks for letting me talk. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put Mike. Oh, Michael Mike, took his hand we're in the queue, and then uh, okay. Um, all right, uh, I see the top list, Maria. <coughs> um, I'll try to be quick. I I don't feel comfortable <laughs> saying CRC and Town Council are not in the right place to set zoning priorities. I agree, yeah, writing zoning bylaw, that's not for anyone other than planning department, I imagine. I can't imagine a s normal human is taking on that role other than Rob Crowner and Chris Brestro um, and anyone else in the planning department. So I don't think literally CRC are gonna be drafting bylaw. They're gonna lean heavily. I mean, Chris Brestro is basically gonna be writing it. Um, but I just like to keep it short in that I still support tabling any more zoning subcommittee work until priorities <laughs> are set, until we know where Mr. Mora is going with his work, until the load is lightened a little bit more for the planning department. Um, I'm not interested in, I've already been through this for probably three years now. I'm not interested in drafting more ideas for zoning amendments and articles until we know it's actually gonna get traction. Um, when we transitioned between town meeting to town council, we I tried this. I tried to be proactive and set up a lot of zoning amendments. I delved into housing. I, we Janet delved into inclusionary zoning. Uh, David Levinson delved into several other. I think it was mixed use, and it didn't go anywhere. And I, I just don't. I, I don't want to do that again until we have a clear direction. And then I'm happy to try to help facilitate that. But until then, I don't want to do what I've been doing for the last two to three years. Yeah, I, I, I can see, you know, kind of a sanity issue here where you put all this and it doesn't go anywhere. And, and it's like, let's, let's, let's be realistic here. Um, and I see Doug. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess it seemed I, I, I had nothing to do with the previous regime back when we had town council uh, or a town meeting. But you know, the problem with town meeting is it didn't matter what came out of the planning board. You really didn't know whether it would pass town meeting until you would put in all the work. So now we have the benefit of having a town council that's a discrete number of people who can answer questions and engage in conversation. So, you know, whether it's our zoning subcommittee that works and kind of in the room with Chris Brestrup and her staff, or whether it's CRC, you know, we now have the opportunity to have conversation with CRC and town council to find out if anybody's wasting their time before most of the work is done. So that seems to me to be a benefit of the current situation. As far as the priorities go, you know, Maybe our priorities will be different than town council. Um, and if we want to put their feet to the fire, we can work on, you know, proposals that are not their priorities and 
they have to vote on it. That doesn't seem particularly diplomatic to me. Uh, the chances of success seem low, kind of in the abstract. But yeah, we could do that. But now that we've got a group we can converse with, I think we ought to take advantage of that and figure out a way to work together. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Janet. So I'm all for talking directly with people. And um, I've often asked the planning board to consider having a liaison to CRC so we have at least some information going back and forth. Um, so I've gone to a lot of CRC meetings and I don't remember when this was, it was sometime in the winter where they were talking, you know, like the reason we haven't given any zoning to town council is that we were told all fall not to send zoning to town council, even though we had some things ready because it wasn't, the town council wasn't ready to handle it. And then I've been at a CRC meeting where Dave Zomack suggested to the CRC getting rid of the zoning subcommittee. And the CRC took that up and talked about it for 20 minutes until Christine Brestrup kind of kindly and gently pointed out that C zoning subcommittee is a meeting of the planning board. Um, and so, you know, we haven't, I, I can see your frustration, Maria, in waiting for years for stuff to go forward. We were sort of gracefully holding back on a few things because we didn't want to tax the town council. And we seem to have gone from that to the CRC sort of saying, you know, anyway, so the next thing I've heard about the end of the you know, zoning subcommittee was I was talking to Christine Ray Mullins about some issues about the website of the planning board. And I mentioned something about CRC and she said, oh, CRC is dead. You know, planning board's not gonna do any more zoning. That's all gonna be in the planning department and town council. So obviously conversations have been going on in town, amongst town government, amongst our leaders, but they haven't directly engaged with the planning board or the zoning subcommittee. So I would invite people to come talk to us. Um, the last time we talked about zoning changes with Rob Mora, he was gonna work with the zoning subcommittee. If we get rid of that committee or put it to sleep, who is Rob Mora talking to? Can we put together a planning process and execute it for Six months, you know, I just, I feel nothing but um, confusion and frustration. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a very blunt person. I come from a blunt region. I come from a blunt economic class. I come from a, a family of blunt people. I don't really understand this kind of maneuvering. And if the zoning subcommittee isn't useful and the planning board doesn't have a role in suggesting zoning changes for the town, that's a huge role for planning boards and it's, it's a power that's given to us by state law. And so I, I just want to know what are the waters I'm swimming in? I'm sorry it's taken away from us because she's invaluable, but we do write our own minutes and we can post our own agendas and we can work on what the CRC is working on side by side and in parallel play or together or meeting. But I don't really want to diminish the role of the planning board, the zoning subcommittee in zoning. It just seems like we're an independent board. We're supposed to be people from the town. We're not elected officials. We live in different neighborhoods. We have a lot to offer. And I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, it's been a very frustrating process for me in the past year, and I haven't been on a two-year situation. So I think we should just continue talking about this and get some perspectives. But I really would like the CRC or Mandy Johanneke or somebody who's the head of something come talk to us about how they like to work with us and like that. I, I prefer a direct communication than trying to read tea leaves and statements. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Chris, please. I'm trying to thread my way through this whole process too. And um, I, I think it has been, you know, fairly confusing. I did want to say that um, the planning board's role in zoning amendment zoning bylaws is really to hold a public hearing about the zoning amendment and make a recommendation to whomever the legislat legislative body is. Um, in the past, the zoning, the planning board has been the body that um, generates zoning bylaws, but that's not always the case. It's not the case in Northampton. The staff generates the zoning bylaws and brings them to the city council and then the city council refers them to the planning board for public hearings. So it works differently in different um, 
cities, which we are now a city, where even though we're called the town of Amherst, we're operating uh, as a city. Also, I wanted to say that um, I think one, one speaker mentioned that um, she thought that the town council was the executive body of the town. Really, it's the legislative body, and the executive body is the town manager. So that's changed. That's you know different from the way it used to be. The select board was part of the executive, but that's not, no longer the case. The town council is the legislative body, which is the same as what the town meeting was. Um, I think that it's worth having the conversation, and I would love to have um, Mandy Johanneke or a representative of the CRC come and meet with the planning board and talk about what their view of the process is, because um, you know I get a lot of this secondhand too. Um, but I work for the town. I work for the town um, managerial staff, and so my um, direction comes from them. So I, I do what they um, you know, want me to do. And um, so, I, yeah, I, I, what I would really like to do here is, is say that we will continue this conversation. Um, we can continue the conversation through the fall and then try to figure out, does the zoning subcommittee still have a role? And if it does have a role, then who's gonna be on it? Who's gonna support it? Is it gonna have a staff liaison, et cetera? But right now that doesn't seem possible, at least from my point of view. Um, would you like me to invite Mandy Johanneke and perhaps Dave Zomek to come and talk to you about this topic at one of your upcoming meetings? Uh, I would say that's, um, I, I actually, I, I, I thought maybe Dave might be here this evening, uh, but um, that seems very, you know, reasonable uh, to me. And, uh, you know, we, we are after nine o'clock <laughs> and, um, and there's a lot to this. There, there's, there's definitely, um, you know, a lot for us to, to think about in terms of the history and our, our mission. And then, you know, the new town government. And so we really just started talking about this, what, last meeting uh, in terms of the full board. Okay, so, uh, but I, I think, you know, Maria's, you know, spot on and we don't wanna, you know, like drop the ball, you know, per, you know, what I think the points that Janet has, uh, uh, has made, if that is part of our, our function. But again, it looks like it's, it's complicated. I think there's professionals that, you know, consultants that do perhaps this work and then we review it sort of thing, but We've been blessed with, uh, you know, members that that have gotten into the weeds. Uh, you know, Rob Crowner was mentioned, um, and and it seemed like that you know, kind of um, uh, forming it, you know, in terms of presentation to the town meeting. And now we don't have town meeting, and now you know the CRC just formulated. Well, one one committee was dissolved, right? And CRC was created, Chris? What, how, CRC took, was um, split into two groups that, I uh, forget what, it starts with a T. So that was one group and then the CRC remained and then o OCA was done away with. So the right, CRC okay. some so, responsibilities I mean, and it's let go of other responsibilities. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I suggest that we 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 talk about this again uh, next meeting, and perhaps have uh, Joanne and, and Dave Zomack, as you suggested, mm -hmm. uh, speak to us, and just so we can get our arms around this better. Um, yep. Mike. Yeah. Um, sooner rather than later, in terms of a meeting with uh, Mr. Zomack and uh, Ms. Haneke. Okay. Uh, it seems to me that uh, if, in fact, the CRC is assuming the role of primary uh, adjudicator of zoning issues, uh, that leaves very little for the planning board to really do in terms of, uh, of planning, which is the name of the board, uh, and that the sooner we know that, 
the better we are and we can uh, turn our energies to something else. Yeah. Well, it just seems like whatever happened, it was like, it was a, it was a heavy lift where Rob Mora, in addition to Chris, uh, uh, because we're talking about a rewrite and that's, you know, prior the ZSC was looking at small changes, language kind of things and just, you know, imperfections that, you know, simple maybe to the planning board, but to the town meeting seemed complex and we, and we just, Inclusionary zoning is not a simple little thing. It's a major thing, and that we've been working on right. that. Well, that's different. And we, we have we have assumed the responsibility for forwarding those kinds of issues to the next level, the next legislative level, and mm -hmm. we have, in my view, abdicated that responsibility. And that's part of partly because the planning board has not ridden the zoning subcommittee hard enough to make those things happen. And I take responsibility for that. I've tried to go to some of those meetings, but I haven't been to all of them. Uh, and I, you know, I've brought up several times that we needed, that we as the planning board needed to instruct the zoning subcommittee, our zoning subcommittee, to do this or to do that. Uh, and for one reason or another, uh, the result of that instruction has not paid off. Uh, it's not gotten past the, um, writing stages and it's not been forwarded to the next level to the, to the legislative level at town meeting level or at town council level it's works it has worked both ways uh and uh i you know i i think that's that's wrong i think that zoning is the responsibility statutorily of the planning board i mean not the final responsibility but the responsibility for initiating proposals and if we don't do it and the crc is going to do it Okay, uh, fine. Let them do it, and let's not bother with it. I mean, why do we? Why do we? Why, why do two groups have to do it? Right. I did. I did. I just. There's a lot of frustration. I think, uh, as Maria has hinted. Um, so I guess you know either we put it on a hiatus, or we are, we will reserve a half hour a meeting to di to discuss about zoning. But for sure, it seems like we need to have more input from the town, which would be uh, uh, Dave Zomack, maybe, you know, Chris can attend to this uh, more and then and then Mandy. So uh, I suggest we table this perhaps and then, then take it up next meeting and, and try to get some clarification on, you know, what the town is looking for from planning board. I know there's state laws and and all that, but um, we have a new government and we're just trying to figure this out. So does that sound a reasonable thing to invite a couple of individuals to speak with us next time? Because I think we have a light, uh, you, you told me we have a September 2nd, you said the survival center has a shed coming in and then the high school has a couple of tents. So this is September 2nd meeting so it's not, it shouldn't be a full meeting. And, you know, it seems like we can discuss this. Sounds good. Further at this time. Okay. Any objections on the board to that plan? Okay. Doug Marshall has his hand up. Oh, sorry. Doug, please. Yeah, I was just gonna comment that we still are the ones that originate the master plan for the town. So presumably all the zoning changes that somebody else might originate need to be consistent with the master plan. So maybe we need a master plan that's a little bit clearer and makes harder choices about the, you know, uh, pleasing everybody uh, in its writing. <laughs> So, I mean, we're, it's, go, it's going through some edits right now. Theoretically, no, but that was actually put on hold. Yeah, higher priorities with COVID. Um, uh, Mike, did you have? Yes. Um, if we're going to think about the master plan, we really need to think about the implementation matrix of the master plan, which is the thing that makes it 
useful. Um, and uh, I've said several times that we need to focus on the implementation, to have an implementation subcommittee. It needn't be staffed by the planning department, it seems to me. I think the, the existing matrix can be reviewed by two, three, four people, whoever want to be on that committee, and begin to develop ways of exploring the degree to which the master plan has been followed or not followed in town operations for the last 10 and the future 10 years. Um, and uh, if the master plan is going to be the planning board's only job, well, then we better get on it. So perhaps we could have a, a section uh, five that as a zoning and slash master plan, um, you know, breakdown or update that we can at least spend some time, you know, during this hiatus. Um, in addition to having Dave Zomack and, and Mandy Jo uh, Haneke speak mm -hmm. with us uh, for the next meeting, anyway. Okay, um, very good. Um, no, not not really. Um, I think if we're going to do the 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 implementation uh, is something that we can look at for five minutes and decide whether or not we want to have a committee to do something about it. It doesn't need a discussion at the planning board level, I don't think. Uh, I mean, we could do that, but I think that would be a, a big time waster. And if you want to, uh, it's, it sounds like we want to make the meetings briefer and more uh, uh, um, organized. Uh, I think the more we want to do that, the more we have to rely on subcommittees and small groups. Okay, well, so the master plan is, is, is on hiatus, correct, Chris? I mean, we already decided that. The planning board decided that they wanted to focus on zoning or have staff focus on zoning, have the town focus on zoning rather than focusing on the master plan at this time. Um, that is coming before the town council at some um, one of their upcoming meetings where they're going to be asked um, to rescind their request to the planning board to continue to work on the master plan um, for for us, you know, some set period of time until after um, a chunk of work is done on the zoning bylaw. Um, I think that's a recognition of staff and how far staff can be stretched to work on both the master plan and the zoning bylaw at the same time. Um, so anyway, the request was made by the planning board to ask the uh, town council to put the request to work on the master plan on hold. And then I think part of that was to suggest to the town council that they actually adopt the master plan in its current form. And I think there's going to, there has been or will be some pushback on that. I think that the um, town council is not necessarily ready to adopt the master plan in its current form. So I think that there will probably need to be some work on it. But um, in my mind, I really agree with Michael that um, you know, there's so much in the uh, implementation matrix that can be done that is right there that are, you know, things are already spelled out that can be acted upon. There are already many things in that implementation matrix that have already been accomplished. So, um, you know, if the planning board wants to continue to work on that, that's, that's reasonable to work on the matrix, but not to necessarily work on the rewriting of the master plan, because I don't think the staff is going to be able to handle that, to do that at the same time as we're doing zoning. So this, this is all conversation that started sometime in the spring and it's been brewing. Um, and I think, you know, Christine Gray Mullen talked to Mandy Johanneke and and things and, and things have evolved as, as a result of those conversations. So, um, so we're sort of in transition right now, but I'm hoping to get some solidity and some direction and, um, you know, really put our all into working on zoning. Of course, we would bring zoning to you, even if you didn't have a zoning subcommittee, we would be bringing zoning to the planning board to update you on what was being worked on. Um, but we would also be working with the, with the CRC. 
So I, I kind of lost track of what you asked me, but. Um. Well, well, again, I, I feel like I, my target was nine. It's nine twenty-five. If we can put this as an item on old business, and old. continue it the next meeting, and hopefully have the guest speakers that we mentioned, I would be very appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll second it. Okay. Um, roll call necessary on closure yeah. of the discussion. Okay. What, Everybody what, shaking their head. Yes. No. I'm not sure what we're what we're voting on. What are, what did what we're, we're going to discuss this? We're going to discuss it next meeting. We're going to continue well, this. The motion. You don't have to vote on it. Well, then why do we second? I, I'm I'm confused about where we are. So, it's going to be. I'll, with, I'll withdraw the second. <laughs> it was, uh, preemptory. Okay. <laughs> so just put it on the agenda and uh, that's good. Okay. So topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours part of the meeting with regard to new business. None. Okay. Um, form A and our, in our uh, subdivision applications. We do have one. And if Pam oh, can yeah. have the drawing, we can look at it. Um, it is a subdivision, uh, excuse me, it's an A&R on Bay Road. Um, Don Allison, who's an attorney in town, owns a pretty large piece of property on Bay Road, just east of the, um, the roundabouts down by Atkins uh, Corner. And um, the yellow, the yellow uh, parcel is one parcel and the turquoise parcel is the other parcel. So um, what he is planning to do do is to um, have Kestrel Trust acquire the land that is outlined in turquoise, and then Kestrel Trust will gift that land to the town as conservation land. Um, and that will be connected with other conservation land that the town owns in this vicinity. Now, the issue about the ANR, if Pam would bring up that map, um, is that Don Allison has some parking spaces that are um, to the east of his existing property line. So he wants to be able to claim those parking spaces as his own as part of the um, house lot and not have them go to the conservation lot. So he's uh, asking to redraw the property line that separates these two properties by incorporating those parking spaces into his house lot. So I think it's a pretty simple ANR, um, and if you would authorize uh, Mr. Jemsek to sign the uh, ANR plans, um, that would be what we're looking for. Move that we so authorize. Okay. Very good, Janet. No, I'll second. Um, could somebody, can you, Chris, can you tell us what these, these kind of um, square rectangles are, these little blots? Um, that's a good question. I have a picture of it. And there's three big ones. There may be, um, maybe just a, what am I trying to say? A survey. Um, just, I think they're just descriptions. They've got, they've got writing in them. I'm looking at the. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Descriptions of parcels. There's parcel A, parcel B, and parcel 25B60. Okay, okay. So A and parcel B are the two new parcels that come out of this. I have a super faint map here that I couldn't quite read. Okay. And the, the one that's down in the lower corner is a description of um, one of those lots. Okay. So I think uh, Doug seconded so we can um, have a vote. Uh, Mike? Yes. Uh, Maria? Yes. Doug? Aye. Uh, Janet? Aye. <laughs> and myself, yes. To or contact Mr. Jensik to come in and um, sign these plans. Thank you very much. And the next is upcoming uh, ZBA applications. So, I don't have anything new to tell you, do you, Chris? 
Well, did we tell you that there was an appeal taken against the decision of the building commissioner with regard to uh, whether he was correct in um, his interpretation of the zoning bylaw with regard to the front setback issue on Amherst Media? I don't know if we told you about that, but it's probably not something that you would want to review. Um, it's, it's kind of a technicality. It's the, uh, the abutters to the Amherst Media property are, um, you know, they have a very good lawyer who's working very hard to uphold their point of view that they don't want that building there. And so they're trying all different kinds of things to keep the building from being and built. I see Doug's hand. Uh, didn't we hear that that was not appealable? Um, the attorney for Amherst Media believes it is not appealable and we believe it is not appealable, but the attorney for the abutters believe it is appealable. So they're appealing it. Uh, on a different matter, what's the status of uh, the Northampton Road, the, the Valley yeah. CDC development? Yep. They, were, they were supposed to have their um, third or fourth meeting tomorrow night, but it wasn't posted properly. So um, they're gonna have that meeting on Tuesday um, and they're going to be, um, hearing responses to questions that were asked last time and discussing, um, oh, I, I forget exactly what they're gonna be discussing, but the okay. agenda will be posted. In fact, I think it might've been posted tonight. Um, so tomorrow, the chair of the ZBA and the staff person are going to meet in a Zoom meeting and announce to everybody that that meeting had to be rescheduled because of lack of posting. I see, thank you. Um, uh, next topic, uh, upcoming SPP, SPR, and SUB applications. It's all about tents and sheds. Um, I think Jack told you that you were going to have a, a shed for the survival center and three tents for the high school on your September 2nd agenda. And then for September 16th, you're going to have a tent for the um, Jones Library, which is going to be erected on their front lawn. They'd really like to start doing some of the things that they've been doing inside or had been doing inside the building. They wanna offer more services to people. So, so that'll be coming on the 16th. Thank you. And uh, plenty board committee and liaison reports. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I have nothing to report. Uh, Community Pre Preservation Act Committee, Mike. No, nothing, thank you. Okay, and Agriculture Commission uh, is vacant. Design Review Board. Nothing. I, again, uh, and then the Zoning Subcommittee, Maria? Nothing, okay. Uh, report of the Chair, I have nothing. Uh, report of Staff. I'd like to thank Jack for chairing tonight. I think you did a great job. Thank you very much. And um, thank you. <laughs> for our leader for the next few meetings. Thank you. And we can adjourn at 9.33.